Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Z, and today we have a very special interview. We've had plenty of interviews before, but today it's the big cheese. We've got the lead mod from RTI Imperium Serectum, Howler Man, a Howl Eleven. Welcome back to the channel. Hey, it's good to be here, man. Um, it's hard to believe it's over a year since we did the first one, but um, uh, we've been working. Uh, closely together we've gotten to know each other a lot over the past year and i've enjoyed every minute of it yeah it's been good fun and uh it's been really interesting for me especially seeing the inner workings of uh of the mod um which is part of the reason why i can give you guys such in-depth stuff as well thanks to the access that uh a howl and everyone else has given me into the mod as well so thank you very much for that it's been a it's been a real pleasure yeah, no, it's um, it's definitely been, um, you know how it is behind the scenes. It's been a lot of work, a lot of discussion, a lot of questions and answers. Um, but, you know, I I like doing it. Um, I Part of my degree was like marketing and advertisement. And so um, even though I don't have the patience to be a YouTuber, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I will more than happy supply you um, with ideas and organization and um, all the content needed to make these videos. Uh, worth watching yeah definitely and uh, in case you don't know guys a lot of the videos have come from a howl and his input and uh, a lot of the details there as well uh, so it's been you know invaluable for me to to get this information out to you guys and present it in a way that at least you guys will understand and uh, know what's going on behind the scenes as well uh, which has been great uh, it's been fantastic um yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I've learned a lot. Um, I've learned a lot about planning, uh, coordination, strategy. Um, you know, it's a lot that goes into it because we want to make sure that you guys out there are getting the very best quality and um, the best information. We don't want to confuse you. Uh, we don't want to just drop release without anything. And like, it takes a lot of work to maybe make like a guide. Um, we've been asked for guides, and every time I get asked for a guide, I cringe because it's like <laughs> I can't imagine how long that would make. But like the videos, um, I know they're audio instead of like instead of reading it, you're hearing it. Um, but I think it's a good way of showing off everything in a more entertaining manner, in a very informative manner. And then it's like if you still have questions after the video, you can just come to our Discord or message us or comment in the YouTube video and we can like clear up any nuances that you might have. So um, I really like um, doing this with you and you've been so great and so patient with me and the team. You know, like we had a couple videos planned at a certain time and I was like, wait, we're not done yet. <laughs> we're still waiting on this. <laughs> and we had to shuffle the schedule around multiple times. So thank you for your patience, and your uh, flexibility. Well, thank you for the access. I mean, I think, I think it's uh, it's safe to say that uh, by this point we can pretty much say you know RAS weekends has been a success both for the channel and for the mod uh, hopefully as well I mean hopefully it's brought quite a lot of people to the mod as well uh, that haven't seen it before um, yeah. so yeah I've, I've really enjoyed doing it and you know it's a lot easier doing videos on something that you absolutely love than doing videos on something that you might not love as much uh, as we were just previously talking before this started about total war pharaoh but uh <laughs> oh yeah 100 man i don't even like i watch your ras lucid campaign i don't know if i could get behind your uh let's play of pharaoh i just don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah that lucid campaign's been going on for a long time as well like it's pretty much nine or ten months now i think um yeah, yeah. so yeah it's been, yeah it's and it's to be fair, I think it's probably the most epic campaign I've played in a in a Total War game. It's been absolutely fantastic. It's been so fun. I've really enjoyed it. Um, That's very good, especially with the Seleucids, because I remember last year when this been released, I was like, man, I I feel like everybody's gonna hate the mod because the Seleucids are like impossible and all those regions and like what do you do? And it's like just like a bloat, right? Yeah. Um, and then you're like, I'm going to do a let's play on it. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> it's going to really kill us as a mod. But uh, no, it's it's been super epic. And I love how as the mod, as the campaign has gone on, like more and more people have like, like Cappadocia and Bactria, Pontus, like Galatians, like um, one by one, they're kind of turning on you. Yeah. And um, 
you've just been dealing with it and I like it. And uh, it's a very, it, it didn't seem like a vanilla Seleucid campaign where it's like everybody just declares war on you at the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah. It felt like a legit, like this is how the Seleucid should be. It's like they've attacked you when you weren't expecting it. And, um, but they messed with the wrong guy because, you know, nobody can, nobody's going to be able to conquer an empire created by Red Red. <laughs> Well, hopefully not. Um, <laughs> we'll we'll see when 0.6 comes out. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll but see. Uh, yeah, hopefully not. Anyway, um, but yeah, no, it's been it's been really fun. I, I've really enjoyed it, and I hope you guys at home have uh, enjoyed it as well. And uh, I hope you can see that I've really enjoyed the the campaign coming through the screen as well. Because you know, I do get salty sometimes, but that's just me. Like. <laughs> I don't think some people understand that. Like, I can get really salty at something that I absolutely love. Like, <laughs> like okay, like you got salty over your cavalry being too slow, and I messaged, I paused the video, and I messaged you, and I'm like, dude, why don't you just stop running around with your cavalry everywhere, and maybe they be so slow. <laughs> and what was my response? <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember. You were just, you're, oh yeah, you were just like, it's just a bit of salt, mate. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> but when you get fired up, like when you beat the Galatians in that huge video, I, 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 that battle, and you you were like screaming, um, <laughs> I have to admit that was pretty entertaining. Yeah, the uh, the classic uh, the the streamer scream, shall we call it the streamer <laughs> scream? <laughs> You're pounding your desk. Yep, yeah. I was like, wow. I mean, I got just as excited about being able to build in every settlement, so that'll tell you how much of a, uh, a campaign management nerd I am. So. Yeah, I got that short video while I was at work, and I, I had to turn down the volume, and people were like, looking at me. Like, what, what are you watching? I was like, oh, nothing. <laughs> just just some nerd enjoying, uh, enjoying campaign management. <laughs> yeah, just building buildings on a computer game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, um... We'll actually get into the meat of the <laughs> the meat of the uh, the interview, shall we? Uh, yeah, we've, sure. uh, we've waxed lyrical uh, quite a bit. So, uh, by the way, guys, just in the background, I'm just playing a bit of Epirus. I probably won't play any battles just because it will be very hard to concentrate <laughs> on the interview. So we'll just play a little bit. You get a bit of sneak preview gameplay from uh, from the game. Um, and if it does run slightly slower than usual, that is because <laughs> I am uh, you know recording this and playing and talking on discord and have an internet uh, thing open for something we're going to do later as well so uh, i've got a lot of things open on the computer okay uh, but yeah so we have talked about this before if you haven't seen our previous interview guys about 0.5 then do go and check that out and of course check out all the ras weekends videos especially the interviews if you do like this format um, but we're going to talk a little bit about the mod and where it came from what was the idea and how you got into it. So, um, Ahal, so what, you know, where did the mod come from? Where did it start? Where was the idea and what was the inception of that idea? Um, you know, I, yeah, we definitely did talk about this stuff and like we knew we were going to talk about it again. I think if you want like the long, like, I, it's weird, like a year will go by and you'll have a different perspective on everything. But I mean, feel free to check out the our old interview to see what I had to say there, but like um, to kind of summarize it and kind of simplify it, um, RAS was like, I guess, conceived when um, Remastered was announced. Now, um, a few different things were going on when Remastered was announced. Um, myself and a few of the other team members that are on RAS, we're in the middle of, I guess, getting the band back together mm. to make a new mod for Rome Total War, obviously. Uh, we were going to make a new Rome Total Realism version. So we were in the middle of doing that. Um, and then I believe the people that were from RS2, I have no idea what they were doing at the time. I know they were not in contact with me. Um, and then a lot of the team members that we have on our team, I did not know. Yeah. Or or they were just simply like followers of a previous mod I was making and that I have laid lying dormant in vanilla enhancement um, for a few years up before we started getting the band back together, I was working solo on a mod called Vanilla Enhancement, and mm. uh, it was basically like a super vanilla feeling mod, like yeah. with all the colors and the graphics. Like it stayed true to the original artistic design, but on the mechanics and the core, it felt more like a Rome Total Realism. 
Yeah. And um, so anyway, that was kind of what happened. And, um, you know, like you, you play this mod while you're growing up and through high school. I'm not the mod, the game. You play it through childhood and adolescence, and then you learn how to mod it. And I've been modding it for a decade or so at that point. Uh, you have these dreams. You have like this vision. And I had notebooks with full of notes and ideas. Yeah. And um, the longest time I was just wanting like, can somebody please like edit the engine so that we can get 31 factions like Medieval 2 Total War has it. Mm. And I'd always say like, this is what I would do with the 10 extra faction slots and we should do this. And with the constraints of Rome Total War, you got really good at maximizing the engine without like damaging gameplay. And so, but you have like all this historical data that you learn and you're just like, oh, can't add that, can't add that, can't add that. And then all of a sudden Remastered comes along. Um, and then the people at Feral were kind enough to invite me to an NDA along with other modders. And um, we helped them make sure that everything was made correctly, that everything was kind of ported correctly. And then they were like, hey, like uh, we have extended time and we're allowed to patch it up and we're allowed to update the game. Like, what do you guys want? Like from a modding standpoint. And that was like the game changer right there. I mean, immediately yeah. it was like, more factions, more units, bigger <laughs> map. Like, we just wanted more. We've been hungrier for more for years. So basically that's how it started back in like the spring, summer of 2021. And um, for those who have been following this mod since its inception, we um, put out a release the day of the release of Realm Remastered. And then we put out like 0.2 couple months later 0.3 a couple months after that 0.4 came in the win the winter early spring of 2022 then we took like six months and worked on 0.5 which you guys are all familiar with and um, now it's taken over a year to make 0.6 so you've seen a kind of a progression of as we work on new versions the time frame gets longer and longer um, but I guess that's the challenge of when you have pretty much unlimited capabilities is you can stuff as much as you want into it. But when you do that, it takes more time uh, yeah. because everything that you have to add, there's certain processes and whatnot. So yeah, it's pretty much, that's what we're about. Um, oh, and like, as far as like the concept of the mod, if you haven't like heard of us, um, think of like the old mods, like Rome Realism, Roma Um You could throw Europa Barbarorum in there because Joralof, brings a lot of that. Lusitania brings a lot of that. But even like other simpler mods, like Extended Greek Mod, uh, Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition, um, SPQR Total War, like we draw influences from all the classics. Um, we grew up with them. Uh, we, we take what we like and um, we kind of mix it. And then also we throw in ideas that we've never tried before as well. So at the end of it, it's RIS, which is Rome Total Realism Imperium Serectum, the names of spin off of both RTR and RS2's uh, names, because we kind of, at the time, it was like the big joining of two teams. Yeah. And um, our focus is on historical accuracy uh, from the year 270 BC onwards, um, basically till about the time of Trajan. Yeah. So Trajan is like where we want to cut off content. And 270 BC is where we want to start content. And we're pretty strict about that. Um, and that's a huge amount of time. <laughs> and yeah. I think that's what really, um, it really bogs us down, like as far as a research perspective, but um, tons of content. And uh, we're just scratching the surface with that right now with our uh, upcoming release. Yeah. And that's what we are. Cool. Yeah, sounds good. So uh, when you started the mod, I know you say you you know you uh, you married the two teams together uh, from Roma Serectum and uh, Rome Total Realism. Uh -huh. uh, what was your original aim at that point when you married the teams together, and and what is the aim now? Has it has the aim changed, or or is it the same as what it was back then? Um. Yeah, so I think the original aim was just like, hey, let's combine our ideas and kind of make a hybrid Rome Total War. I mean, Rome Total Realism, Rome Total Realism mod. And we were expecting like the 200 regions, 21 factions, but we were just going to take the best of both worlds, apply it to Remastered, and then maybe like remaster some things and kind of like, here you go. Um, but I you cannot lie, in the back of my mind, I was like, I hope they give us more. 
because this deserves more. If they're going to update the engine and everything, we need to be able to um, mod it to the capability of, of 2021 and not 2004. Yeah. Um, so as soon as I guess Farrell was in contact with me and the others, it was like game on. Like okay, like I'm committed to this for however long I can be committed to this. I don't know how long that's going to be. Um, I don't know where it's going to take me. I don't know how long it's going to take to finish it. I don't even know if we're going to finish it. But this is a dream come true. And as long as I'm alive, and as long as I am not totally caught up with my actual life. Um, I will be involved with this and um, because I've been in a, a lead position before it was natural for me to start it and lead it and um, it comes with its issues and it comes with its pressures but at the end of the day like it's important to have the vision yeah. and it, it's then important to kind of have like a game plan and that game plan is a big game plan but we've been executing it um, and it's not been pretty sometimes but uh, we're I'm very impressed and I'm very proud with our the people who have been involved because um, it's a huge scope of what we're trying to do and it's something that's never been done before and there's so many hazards and risks along the way but I have no regrets starting it and I will see it through to I guess the bitter end. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hopefully at least 1.0. <laughs> yeah, I think mean, that's the goal. It's like it kind of feels weird we're at 0. point whatever, but um, you know, we didn't intend 0.6 to take this long, um, but we're just going to continue with the, com the number structure. Uh, it just, I guess, from an internal coding perspective, people have told me like with updates and software that they make, that's like the best way to um, label releases, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, so with that, then, so you'd say the aim's pretty solid since the start, then, to uh, to create the ultimate, I guess, historical mod for Rome Total War. So uh, we finished talking about the aims, then. But when we talk about the team, it's a big team, isn't it? How many people are now in this team? Because <laughs> when I'm in the Discord, there's a lot of there's a lot of people, isn't there? And uh, there's a lot of people doing a lot of things. So. How big is the team now? How many people are working on the mod to try and get it done? Well, if you can count all the open beta testers, I'd say over a hundred. Mm. Um, developers, probably like 50. Yeah. Um, active developers at all times, 15 to 20. Yeah. Um, people who are like engaged every single day uh, five to ten. Mm. It's just kind of like that's kind of how I see it. Um, I don't count. Um, it's a very fluid team because none of us work for money um, yeah. or anything like that. So people can come and go as they please. I have a list of members like that I know of at the top of my head that have come and gone, and uh, for various reasons. Um, some didn't agree with like some some things we did, and they just kind of fell out of interest. Some people had crisis come up in their lives. Other people just got super busy. Um, some people just drop off the face of the planet. I mean, <laughs> and, and then some of those people that dropped off the face of the planet, just all of a sudden one day they'll just come back and be like, hey, it's like, <laughs> like oh, where'd you go? <laughs> Um, I wonder who that is. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> the, the the guy that's listening, he'll he'll know. It's a it's a, an inside joke. But yeah, I mean, life happens, and that's okay. But yeah, there's been a few times where I'm like, I think that guy died. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, so yeah. And if you guys hear pinging in the in the background, that's most likely me. Um, if I weren't to check my phone or if I weren't to open any messages, I can't imagine how many uh, alerts I'd have on Discord. But um, <clears throat> constant communication with the team. So if you guys hear pings, I apologize. Um, but yeah, I would say like up to 100 plus. I mean, if you want to count the beta testers, they do an amazing job. And I include them in that because they are technically part of the team. I mean, the open beta is out there for anybody. Anybody can join that beta. I mean, if you're, if you're like jonesing for the release, uh, the open beta is right there. You can check it out right now. But it's interesting that only like certain people have actually joined. And um, you see that. You see like a little bit of a level of dedication, a little bit of interest. And 
Um, I can't tell you how often it is that they'll start as a beta tester and next thing you know, um, they're doing things. Like right now, we just added a guy who's a beta tester and he's um, trying to overhaul the female and uh, child portraits in the family tree because, you know, we just took it from like vanilla, like old school vanilla, and it looks mm. re really grainy and pixely and he's just overhauling them. So people will come and go and... Um, the core team is what we used to call it. They're not, we're not, we don't have a core team anymore, but I guess you could say like the core members of the mod um, are the ones that are like the heartbeat and uh, the organs of this mod yeah. and um, making sure that they're always good and we're on the same page and treating same each page. other correctly is important because sense. those are the ones that hurt if they for whatever reason they couldn't help us. Anymore. Yeah. It's pretty much a, a, a mini, uh, a mini, um i guess game dev really a, a mini uh a mini studio well not even a mini studio i mean 15 devs would be a reasonably sized indie studio uh you know i there. know it's weird i know it's sometimes i feel like i'm running a company or something and um it's like we don't get paid for any of this and uh, what are we doing like, sometimes <laughs> like are we, we're like we're just like a bunch of insane people doing this um but it's at the end of the day it's, it's we find joy in it yeah and it's, we're passionate about it so um, i'm glad it's happening yeah exactly and uh you're clearly doing a very very good job as well like you know everyone loves the mod apart from maybe a couple of people but <laughs> yeah <a couple laughs> Every, <people. laughs> everyone who plays the mod does really like it you know you do get the yeah. occasional complaint too many settlements or whatever but you know most people yep. who play the mod do really, um, really like it. And talking of playing the mod, last time we spoke, you said that you don't actually get chance to play. <laughs> so, have you managed <laughs> to load up any campaigns this year? Or <laughs> <laughs> we're? I'd say that answer stays the same, man. I have yet to play anything. Like, um, I played. Funnily enough, I did play one custom battle a couple months ago. I don't know what was the occasion. I think I was testing <laughs> something. And um, it was Mosca and I. Oh! Um, I mean, it's a little spoiler. I don't care. Like, when you're the Seleucids and the Ptolemies, you're going to have... Uh, there's going to be a Seleucid army and a Ptolemy army, like, super close to each other in, like, Lebanon area. Hmm. And... Um, it's a great like first battle to start the campaign yeah because when you're playing those as we know with your let's play it's a lot of campaign management so it just kind of starts you off with an exciting battle and you know we built the armies up and we were talking about it over voice and I was like, oh, i'm gonna try this out i haven't done anything like play wise so mm. and it was fun i won the battle and um it was a beautiful evening scene on a hill so um but then I was like, okay, I need to fix this, and we should do this. <laughs> and it went right back into modding mode. Yeah, so uh, so one one battle, guys. So, uh, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to ask you this every time, and it's going to be the same answer. Next time it'll be, oh, yeah, I, I loaded up like three turns of roads, and then... Uh, I realized yeah. that I needed to fix something. So. Yeah, I just, I just, I just live, I, li I live vicariously through you, man. I, <laughs> I enjoy watching your campaign. And I guess for me, that's my, that's my enjoyment. Yeah, fair, 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 fair enough. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, you know, I, I am going to ask you this every time. And I know the answer is going to be the same, so. Always Go fun to it, ask, man. though. Always. Fun I will to say, ask. I mean, after this, after this release, I'm gonna be tempted to play something. We'll see what happens, though. Which faction? Oh, I can't say that. Maybe <laughs> at the end of the video. You gotta give me a chance to think about it as we do the interview. <laughs> Is that a? Oh, we'll come back to that at the end. Then we'll come back to that at the end. You've got a, You've got a few factions to choose from. So. Um... I oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Should we talk about 0 0.6 then? Um. So you've been working on it for quite a while. So how long has uh, 0.6 taken? And also, you know, combined with that, why... <laughs> I don't mean this in a mean way, but why has it taken this length of time? Because I remember when 0.5 came out, you were hoping for like a January release. And then... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. What an idiot. <laughs> so, so why has it taken this long to get there? Because I... 
I I know the reasons why, but let everyone else everyone else know. Okay. Well, so how long we've we been working on it? Uh, let's see. We released, I believe, on September thirtieth. I believe on October we started overhauling the economy. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I was done with O five O long before we released it. I was like chomping at the bit to get onto O six O. And um, I did not think 060 was going to be what it turned out to be. Hmm. Um, what 060 was originally supposed to be was no new factions at all. And we were going to overhaul the economy, which took us a matter of two weeks. I think right now it's October 11th. I think it was around October 11th that like our economy, like as far as income and growth and all that stuff that you've showcased already... I mean, yeah. that took us like two weeks to do. Um, I got a big shout out to Vic and Mosca for um, d- nightly voice chats on that. Yeah. And we knocked it out. So yes, sir. it was going to be the economy. We were going to add a couple more buildings from like some classic mods like uh, Metro Naval. Um, if anybody knows of that mod, you can comment in the chat. Shout out to you for knowing it. Um, and a few other things. And then the proper Greeks were going to be made. So um, if you think about it, let's see, there's Massalia, there's Syracuse, Aetolia, Achaia, Athens, Boeotia, Sparta, um, Rhodes, Bosporans. There's like nine to ten factions. And it was like just them and like their AOR and mercenaries. And then um, a couple settlements. We were like, okay, hey, like... North Italy, North Africa, and Iberia need to be like looked at, and so does Anatolia. We need to look at this because we didn't, we didn't. In 050, we did our first run through, and then we did like a second run through, but it was only specific areas that we felt were lacking. Yeah. But then after we released, we felt like okay, well now these areas are lacking, so we need to go through a run through of those, and. Um, we thought and believed and honestly the units we finished the units for the greeks like i think the boeotians were our last greek faction to finish and i believe those were finished the last week of december so from a unit perspective that went according to plan you think tone balbor uh refract um exe and mosca for that but um what happened is the map. Um, <laughs> and I will take full responsibility. So I have the Barrington Atlas. And it's a $300, well, at the time it was a $300 book. And it's this huge book, big book. Kind of fits, it like fills up your dining table, basically. <laughs> and you basically can like look at all the cities that existed. And all I did was open it one day to Italy because we were working on Italy. And I was like, well, how come we don't have this? Well, how come we don't have that? Well, where's this? We should add that. We have room for this. And it's next thing you know, like that list of like two or three cities became like a list of 15 to 20 cities. And Jorloff is a very meticulous mapper and worker. He's very, um, very, very procedural. And he takes, a, he's very thorough and he takes a very long time doing what he does. Um, which is opposite than me. I'm like quick to the point, like, I don't care how it looks. Let's just get it in. I don't care. Let's go. He's more like, no, I have to shave the region over here just a couple more pixels. And then I have to reroute the road. And then I'm going to have to um, remove these mountains, add the settle. Like, he's very um, kind of perfectionist. Hmm. So, yeah, I mean, Italy turned into North Africa, and North Africa turned into Iberia, that turned into Gaul. And then go through the map it's like each area took like about a at least half a month if not a month yeah and um so then the units were done the economy was ready the map was broken then it was like wow we have a long ways to go um so Masalos um had been kind of pining for well we need to do something about crete and are we ever going to add heraclea pontica um, you know, here's another potential faction, the Pot- Pontic Pentapolis, and he kept mentioning them. And I kind of know Moslos. Um, I've worked with him for years. When he mentions stuff like that, it's like that's what he wants. 
So yeah. I, I lobbied for it, and people were like, no, we need a release. And I was like, guys, I don't think we're going to get a release for a while, at least this summer, yeah, because the map. And um, at that point, we hadn't done the Thracians either. Jeez, it's, it's crazy <laughs> looking back to January. Um, so, yeah, we just kind of said, okay, this is good. We saw it, so let's do the new factions, and then the new Greek units, um, as well as like a Greek AOR. And then while we're doing that, Lusitanio began working his traits and ancillaries overhaul, which he had explained in his video that he started from nothing. Um, then, as we're going through the Greeks, um, Tone and other artists were like, hey, like we're getting tired of the Greeks, we want to Rome. And and I was like, okay, yeah, sure, let's finish it up. And like May, June, um, we had like, not only did we have Greeks, we had Thracians and we had some Anatolian units, but we now had more than just Greek uh, factions. We we then added uh, Thracian factions and Anatolian factions. And I think somewhere in that time, I had come up with a plan like, hey, like, if we have Hellenistic units and we have Greek units, and we have like some Thracian units and we have some Anatolian units. And we're just going to go to Rome, but we're not going to finish the Thracians and the Anatolians or the Greeks. Like, when are we going to ever come back to them? Mm. And people were like, well, we'll just do that when all the other cultures are finished. But like, but then I was like, okay, well, what does it look like for the culture to be finished? Just the basics or what? So we had like this debate and a lot of discussions. And, um, yeah, it just turned into like, look, let's just finish them now. Let's start. Let's finish what we started. So that in the summer, Tone started getting super busy. So Balvor stepped up, and he was like the main unit maker. And Mosulos and I had talked. I was like, hey, like we're missing all these units. Let's just make them. And yeah. not the you know, I, it's not like everybody was like on board, and everybody <laughs> was like, no, we need to release. Like there's constantly people who are just like, we should release. We should release. But it just never felt finished to me. And I, I felt like I was, we were going to release an unfinished product. And well, what people would be like, well, where's this or where's that? So, yeah, it's just like, it's one of those things where it never quite felt finished. Yeah. And I did not feel comfortable until it was finished. So when RAS Weekend started, we had just finished the map and we were on the tail end of finishing all the units. And then from then on, I thought, okay, all we need to do is um finish up the traits and ancillaries and do like a cleanup yeah. um and do like the emergent faction and all these special mechanics um and then that took longer than expected so that's when in like july i told you and we made the big enough that october 27th and even then i was i i was too short on time I, yeah i should have yeah. if i if in retrospect i probably would have said christmas but mm. at some point you have to understand that you can't be perfect and so i've stuck with october 27th we're going to release what we have in a very clean fashion and then um anything that we weren't able to get to uh we will have patches um along the way there was a few holes too like we had two times where the game was completely unstable mm. one time was because of all the factions that we added um there's a specific order that they need to be in matched across three files. And yeah. if they're not matched across three files, once you add like a certain number of factions, the game just won't work. Like if you click to hit a campaign, it crashes. Mm. And that took a long time to figure out. And then um, just recently, we learned of a crash via script where if you give uh, negative income via script, if a settlement gets to negative one denarii income, it crashes. All right. And that was happening very early, like within 10 to 20 turns, every single campaign and, and you couldn't load the campaign. You couldn't save it. It was bad. And we were panicking. This was, we literally solved this a week ago. So, um, various things came up. Um, we also tested the game, what it would be like if we had 240 factions were, and then the historians and I, we had a huge debate on, uh, what are 240 or 250 whatever factions are going to be and yeah we just it was like one of those things where it's like 
we signed up for something much bigger than we originally thought <laughs> and it gave us a lot of perspective and um, we will be treating development and release dates and all that stuff different which we can get to at the end but um yeah i mean it helped us grow but it also definitely challenged us and it was a long winding road yeah but i mean as you're playing the 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 mod on your screen and as you've shown on your videos um a lot of good has come out of it and we're super excited to bring it to everybody yeah definitely i mean if you haven't seen any of the other RAS Weekends videos, guys, go back and check them out, especially the interviews, because that's when we get a real insight into, you know, everything that's been changed in this version. Of course, we've got the map now, and I did do a, a big video on the map uh, as the first video, I believe, and, and, and at that point, 1717 regions it was, and now it's what, 1808? 1808 is the... I believe the final number for our release. Do you not want to make it 1818 just because it was 1717 before? <laughs> I am. I'm not gonna say that 1808 is the final number forever. I can guarantee you that um, things will be unearthed archaeologically. Things will be found um, via text, um, and we will add like even just the other day, like there's an island. Uh, Skyros, I think Skyros in Greece, where Mosulos is like, how come we don't have a city on this island? So, <laughs> who knows? Maybe it'll be 1809. But um, it's um, as far as just like the bulk work, it's done. I mean, yeah. like right now, Joralov is literally just fixing pathfinding issues, bug issues, crash issues that are all map related, um, coastlines and stuff. And um, yeah, 1808, man, it's. It's insanity. And yes. There's so many. There's so many. As he talked about his video, there were so many that didn't make it, and I wanted every single one because yeah. I love immersion. I wanted all of them, but um, it would have been crazy. I mean, it would have been like almost unplayable if that's what we would have done. Mm. I've, uh, you know, I've given my answer to this a couple of times, but and I've asked a couple of people as well. So I'll probably ask you as well. Might as well. What would you say to the people that? say it's too many regions and that it's just a siege fest and you know it's you know all that sort of thing so what would you say uh, i think it's that I, I think it's just an instinctual response to something that you've never seen before um it's a fear response i think it's a cautious response it's a cynical response it's a skeptical response um it's a human response mm. i don't blame anybody for acting that way or responding that way like it is what it is yeah um i'll tell you what like um i've also thought the same thing when we started doing this um i think everybody on our team has raised a concern about it at some or another um so we're not a, these people who are saying it off off the off the rails like that like oh it looks like a siege fest i'm not that. um hey that's valid that's very fair we once thought the same thing um, but we've been working on it 24 seven and honestly, like it's really not bad at all. Um, campaigns are a lot more regional in scope. Um, they're a lot more in depth in scope. Like think about this way, like think about vanilla or not even just vanilla. Think about RS2, Rumble mm. Realism, Europa Barbarorum, all the classics that we all love. Greece was a shell of what it <laughs> really was back then. Like Greece was a joke. The way the engine limited us to what we were supposed to do, absolute joke. When I load up RTR for reference, like when I'm trying to research some stuff that maybe a mod did, and I look at like, so Realm Total Realism Platinum Edition had like one extra city um, on the Peloponnese. They just added Ellis. So it's Sparta, Ellis, and Corinth. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's insane. And then just remember, <laughs> The, it's the Greek city-states faction that represents all free Greeks. Like, okay, I get why CA probably did that because they probably looked at the history and be like, yeah, we're not doing that. But, and it was a fun faction. Actually, the GCS is one of my favorite factions to play as in vanilla. Um, yeah, those but, hot plates are good. Right, but what it does is it, 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 it takes away what could be. Hmm. 
and the engine could never allow us to do what should be. And um, yeah, I you look at Greece now, and yes, from a, just an aesthetic view, you're like, whoa. But when you play it, which as we discussed before, I haven't, but I, we know Moscow, we know Vic, you, and others on the beta testing team and everything, everybody has been thoroughly enjoying it. It has been so fun. Diplomacy is real. Backstabbing makes more sense. Um, there's many like avenues that you can go. And the way I would say it is like if you've watched your Seleucid campaign and how kind of messy it was in Anatolia for a bit, you had like Pontus, Cappadocia, Galatia. Yep. Um, and you had Bithynia at the beginning, you had Pergamon, and you had the Ptolemies, like, and Rhodes. Think about that in a condensed area like it's Greece, and it's like, you could play as any one of those, and then when you're playing as any one of those, you have all these other players that can make an impact. Um, and it's just like you're in this area, and you, you become immersed in this one area for a long time. And it's like, once you conquer Greece, you didn't have a choice. It's like, okay, do I go to Italy? Do I conquer the Thracians and Illyrians? Do I go into Anatolia? Maybe I go south into Africa. Um, do I just want to stop and play another faction? Yeah. Like, the choice is yours. Um, you can still conquer the world if you want, and that's an epic grand campaign that you can embark on. The choice is yours. And so when I hear Siege Fest, I, hear, I just hear like a first knee-jerk reaction to something that they've never seen before and they're, 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 um, it's kind of like me with new games or new movies i'm i'm very old school i'm very traditional i stay in my lane i like what i like um i had a bad experience with rome too i hated it it was yeah. not what i thought it was going to be and you know i will never go back to it now i've t I heard people tell me like oh, but it's so good now, and it's like DEI and all these things. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. There's going to be people out there that are going to see our mod like that, and they're just like, yeah, I'm good with vanilla. Okay, that's great. Like, we're not going to get our feelings hurt. I think you should try it just to try it, but, like, at the end of the day, this is a game, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not, like, we're not, like, going to, like, get really upset at you because you didn't try <laughs> RIS. Um, but our answer would be like, if you're fearful over Siege Fest, which I think is more of a, I don't think it's real. I don't think Siege Fest is real. Yeah. I think we had this discussion months ago. Um, I, I remember I made a real concise post about it too. We did some in-depth testing and we did a vote. Mm. Um, yeah, we did a vote with beta testers. We did testing. We looked. We we said, okay, what siege fest mean? What's your definition of a siege fest? And people were like, oh, well, you know, like constantly fighting siege battles with like uninspiring like armies. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's the auto resolve. Um, I don't want to be constantly fighting one unit garrison. Okay, auto resolve. I don't want to constantly be on the siege assault screen okay well siege down the settlements at your pace mm. um now there was a few things that we learned that we could fix like we fixed the walls so if you have a town but you have a large town uh tier wall or a city tier wall around the town it will like double or triple the amount of turns it takes to we fix all that to be where it should be um so we fixed a few things, we balanced a few things, and we kind of came to the realization that like Siege Fest is really just a fear that people have. And mm. like through voting, through good discussion, and through asking hard questions, we and I could find that, I could scrounge up that post. It might even be a good thing to have like for release notes. But um, I think at the end of the day, we kind of, uh, we kind of busted a miss. So for me, as we load in on a, a new Athens campaign, here um for me the siege test thing is like kind of a red herring like you said like for me like if you're doing a world conquest in vanilla which for most people who've played the mod since they were a kid or you know since not not not, not the mod uh, the game since they were a kid rome total war world conquest 
on very hard or, you know, whatever difficulty you find uh, is good for you. It's pretty easy. Like, and that's 99 factions, isn't it? Uh, sorry, 99 regions. So, you know, 99 regions might be all of Greece or at least the majority of Greece. Um, so it's just a change of mindset. If you play as Epirus and take all of Greece, you will have done the same as a world conquest in vanilla. And you wouldn't complain about there being too many regions and sieges in vanilla. So it's just a, a matter of perspective, I think. Yeah, of course, if you're playing the Seleucids, you're going to have whatever, 250 regions. And if you don't like campaign management, you're probably not going to enjoy that. But if you like playing, you know, a smaller nation and building up, there's so many nations that start with one or two settlements. I mean, we're loaded in here as Athens and we start with three settlements now. But three settlements is not, <laughs> not a big start, guys. Like, it's a small start, even for vanilla. So, you know... Uh, it's just that change of perspective, I think, is is needed. You don't, Like, when you look at the map, you think, God, it's going to be hard to siege all of that. But let's be honest, are you going to do a, a world conquest? I mean, there's a couple of guys out there I know that are <laughs> uh, from the Discord. Like, I know there's a couple of guys out there that are going to do the world conquest. Give them a shout out, Red. Give them a shout out. <laughs> you know who it is. It's for the great. Yeah, I know that guy. And, and Royce uh, also... Uh, also, it does some pretty big campaigns. Uh, but there was someone else as well, wasn't there, that did a World Conquest? I can't quite remember. I, I only knew of Ispor. Yeah, Ispor. So, Ispor did a World Conquest. And, uh, yeah, there's some, pe some people out there who will do a World Conquest. Fair enough. That's amazing. But, let's be honest, if you're not them, you're going to be like the rest of us and do a regional campaign. And that is perfectly satisfying enough. And it's incredibly diverse and fun i mean if i toggle the fog of war and show you greece now and you know the mod isn't designed like vanilla where when you go to greece all you fight is gcs and and, uh, and macedon and they all have the same units pretty much you know all of these factions as much as a lot of the factions are phalangite based factions they have a pretty diverse and different roster like for example the aetolian league if you haven't seen my roster videos, by the way, guys, check them out because they've been going on for a long time and we've covered all of these rosters in full detail. Uh, but like the Aetolian League, that's a skirmisher roster. So they're going to have skirmisher based armies and, you know, sort of light infantry armies. Same ish with the Boeotians. The Achaeans have a stronger, heavier infantry, more phalangite based army, especially after the reform. Sparta, of course, has just an infantry based army. Um, when we move across to the GCS, they have a pretty much whatever they want army because, of course, <laughs> it's the GCS. Um, but yeah, Athens, again, lighter infantry sort of army. The Antigonids, more Hetairoi and cavalry-based um, sort of uh, flanking forces with phalangites in the middle. Going north to the Thracians, completely different play style, completely different armies. The Odrysians, the Bessi, the Medi. All of these guys, if you fight them, it's going to be a very different experience from fighting the Greeks. You come across to Anatolia, and then you fight the Seleucids, who early game are going to have probably more a hoplite-based uh, army, but later game going to have cataphracts and uh, a gear of speed as reform swordsmen, some really good, strong, heavy infantry. Ptolemies as well, different again with their rosters. Potential for elephants to fight. You know... It's, it's not like you're fighting a region, a regional conquest where you're fighting everyone's the same, you know, units and armies. Like, it's, it's so diverse and so different. And, you know, like I say, if you take all of Greece, that's a good campaign. You've done pretty much a world conquest in vanilla. And, like, all it takes is that change of mindset. Because when you get there, you might either think, oh, great, I've done a campaign. I've finished. I've taken all of Greece. I'm successful. I'm the hegemon of Greece. Or you might get there and think, do you know what? What would happen if I invaded Rome right now and go and invade Rome? Or what would happen if I invaded Anatolia right now or something like that? That's what this mod gives you. It gives you the ability to have a standard campaign if you want in a region, but then you've got so much choice uh, afterwards as well. You know, if you'd have done a 99 uh, campaign in vanilla, all you're going to take is the world and then you're done. Now you take 99 regions and you can either stop or you can go, do you know what? What's going to happen if I go and take on the Seleucids or something like that? So, you know, I think that the Siege Fest thing is really kind of a, more of a red herring 
than anything else. It, all it takes is that little change of mindset. I completely agree. And as you were talking, it reminded me. I don't. I wasn't on the forums back then. This is like 2006. Yeah. But when I was in charge of Rome Total Realism, I used to read all the old discussions to kind of see why Rome Total Realism became what it was. Mm. And there was a mod out there called Metro Naval Mod. I had actually mentioned it. Well, the Metropolis part of that mod, Metro, yeah, it uh, only allowed certain cities to build walls. Yeah. And it was to prevent Siege Fest. Now, what's funny is they were talking about Siege Fest back in 2006 when there was only uh, 200 settlements max on the map. <laughs> yeah. They were concerned about it then. And um, now nobody complains about a 200 region map uh, having a siege fest. Yeah. So I think what it is is exactly what we're both saying. It's just an innate, immediate knee jerk reaction like, oh God, no way. Uh, never going to play that. That's a siege fest. Yeah. And it's like, but like, is it really? Like, what you have to ask yourself, what is a siege fest? And like, okay well there is a remedy for each of this there, there's auto resolve they're sieging it down or there's fighting it and there's so many things going on in your campaign like i think about your campaign and i was waiting for you to um assault sparta for the longest time you never did they just surrendered yeah and it was kind of like an anticlimactic end to sparta but <laughs> like you had so much going on in your campaign so you've left settlements just under siege and go do other things and then oh yeah i forgot i was sieging that down now it's fine so it's like is it really there is this best really there like so yeah i'm with you man and i i think as people play and they enjoy and they see that this is a different way to do rome total war or a different way to to do total war game um i don't think it'll be so much of an issue and if it is an issue for people you know hey fair it's fair I, I respect that. I understand where you're coming from. I can empathize with that. And maybe we're just not the mod for you, and that's okay. Yeah, and and uh, like we said last time, like if the map is a problem and it's too big for you, because like we say, it might be, and you might not be a hardcore campaign management nerd like myself or like <laughs> a really old player from back in the day that's been playing Rome Total War pretty much since it came out. You know, you might be a newer player. You might have seen a video on the game or or you might have seen a video on the mod and thought it's really cool, but the map's just too big and you don't know how to learn it because it is a difficult mod, let's be honest. It's, it's quite difficult depending on what faction you start as. All of these assets, with credit, of course, are being offered by the mod team. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Ahal. For everyone to use, as long as you give credit to RTR Imperium Serectum, so of course. I am sure that there will be mods coming out and sub mods coming out that'll be like the RAS units, but on a, on the Imperatoris Mundi map or RAS units, even on the vanilla map or RAS factions on, uh, you know, a, a smaller map with maybe 500 regions or something like that. So, uh, and if you are a modder out there and the map is too big for you, I mean, that's a good project to start on, isn't it? So um, like I say, there'll be plenty of sub mods for this mod, especially the bigger and more popular it gets, the more sub mods are going to be made. Similar to how D DEI is with the amount of sub mods on DEI and the different uh, ways you can actually play that mod. Um, I mean, that's my opinion. Anyway, I think there'll be loads of sub mods eventually. Uh, which I will think be really so, good. and I hope so. I mean, what about if you like the vanilla map and you want the um, RAS style faction symbols and units? Go yeah. for it. Yeah. Go for it. Exactly. Um, yeah. What if you like, um, shout out to Kersey. What if you like Kersey's Imperator map? Hmm. Take our units, take our symbols, let us know you're doing it, and we'll let you know who to give credit to. And go for it. Like, all of our assets are out there for use. We're not, we're not, um, gonna be the team that says you can't use our stuff. You can use our stuff. You just gotta let us know. You know, maybe you want our map, but you don't want so many regions. Go for it. Talk to Jorla. You want our units? Talk to Tone. You want faction symbols? Talk to Naked Spur. You want code integrity? Talk to me. Like, um, yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal. Like, I, if you don't like it, 
I mean, we didn't like Rome Total War after a while, so we modded it. So if you don't like <laughs> RAS, mod it. That's that's sacrilege, man. You can't say you didn't like T Rome Total War. I, I'm not oh, taking I can't, that. Yeah, I, can't, <laughs> I, I love Rome Total War, but like as far as like things that it could have that would make it so much better, it, you know. It's yeah, just, yeah. So you start modding, it's just, and then you're down a rabbit hole for the rest of your life. Yeah, I think um, Rome Total War is one of those, like, for me now, like, I could load up a vanilla campaign and I would have an absolute blast until I've conquered that 99th region, which would probably be in, like, depending who I'm playing, like, 60 turns. So, <laughs> yep. And then I'll be like, oh, right, that's it. And then I wouldn't want to load up another campaign because, I don't know, for me, it's so easy. It's like, it's it's too easy you know now especially if you're playing like an eastern faction where you have horse archers like uh like in my parthia world conquest campaign i got to rome and conquered rome before they even had the marian reforms and i had an army that i'd had from the start of horse archers that the highest level experience in the whole army was two silver experience like, that is how much those horse archers were dominating people because they were just not getting experience because they were just killing everyone so quickly. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it's, yeah, there's, you know, I, I, I'll i always love Vanilla Rome Total War for the nostalgia, but if you want a real gaming exp like game experience, then, you know, mod's the way to go, isn't it? So, um, yep. Well, let's, uh, let's move on to then towards more the... We've talked quite a bit about the map probably a bit about the gameplay as well um is there anything else you want to say on the gameplay or uh, should we move on to like sort of the economy and the balance of the of the mob um for me i think mosca covered gameplay really well yeah. um i will say this there's a lot of stuff like that we were hoping to get in for the main release that's not going to be in the main release They're, we're actually going to patch it in um that's going to be dependent on what happens for the next couple weeks you know we're recording this on the 11th wondering so this october 11th where these were talked about so we're not quite finished uh, we've been we're kind of slowly grinding through emergent factions so i do know that there will at le least be a few emergent factions and each emergent faction when they emerge you'll be given a chance to play as them um yeah. that's kind of like where i like mosca is very focused on like the actual camp depths like the the meta where I'm more focused on like the immersiveness of a campaign. Yeah. And all I can say is just like, I'm very, very, very like excited for the immersiveness of the campaign. Like to me, Emergent Factions brings immersion. Scripted events brings immersion. Very hard work and work that I'm not experienced in. Um, but the pe some of the people on our team are really picking it up. That's what brings immersion. And um, all the cultures that we have in the represent all the representation that we have in the mod um i'm really excited for that with the gameplay it's like you're getting a total war experience it's a clean intuitive experience as far as the meta but it's also a very immersive experience as far as um the depths and i think that's like the balance that we're always looking for right we're yeah. looking for tons of immersion and historical accuracy and like um cultural divisions and political divisions and whatnot but then we're we're also just looking for a clean, fun, challenging game that's not confusing, and I think we're gonna be able to add, give you both in O six O, and that's that's what I would be most um, that would be like a best broad statement for gameplay balance and like units and factions is like you're getting a ton of history with a clean uh, way to play the game, and I think Red's videos have done a great job of like showcasing. Um, how we've simplified it and um, unit stats and economy and um, the recruitment video that we'll have out around this time that this one is out yeah. <laughs> for this interview or after this interview we don't know yet um, I'm excited to get that recruitment stuff all done for Red so you guys can all learn how the recruitment works how uh, all the different cultures that we've added um, so yeah, I, I just think it's going to be overall our cleanest, best gameplay experience. Yeah, definitely. And uh, like as as we've said before as well, guys, when you when you load up 0.6. 
play in Greece or Anatolia, please. <laughs> those are the regions that are finished. So play in those regions. Because obviously, you know, you could play Rome if you want to. There's a lot of Roma boos out there. I know you. I know you. Lots of Roma boos out there. Uh, but if you're a Roma boo, you can still play Rome and you still have fun. But the best place to play at the minute because it's finished is Greece or Thrace yeah. or Anatolia. Yes. Um, so definitely yes. pick one of those factions. And, you know, uh, like I say, because all the unit rosters are so uh, different and they they each have their different strengths and weaknesses, um, then, you know, you don't necessarily need to play a Phalangite faction or a Cavalry faction or, or whatever. Um, you, can, you can kind of pick which one based on whatever roster you want to play and what starting position, of course, because... You know, not all factions are born equally. Uh, some are a lot harder than others. So, <laughs> Right. Um, but yeah, so obviously we, with the gameplay, you have balanced the economy uh, as well. And we've done a big couple of videos on that, on the public order, the economy, uh, law, all that sort of thing. And the fertility, I think that was the biggest thing really with the economy, wasn't it? That changing of the fertility. Now, I think that really gives... A lot of depth to the campaign map. In fact, I'll show the fertility map now. Um, so why did you bring that back then from where it was previously when it wasn't the vanilla fertilities? Um, actually, it's a good question. Um, so Extended Realism mod is where we took it from. I used it in, I believe, Realm Solar Realism 8. And we also, I also used it in Vanilla Enhancement mod. And so it was natural for me because I had learned that system so well and it had done so well for me with a 200 region map that we just took it to RIS. But I knew, I think with 050, I was like, yeah, this one, this one, um, this one feature is just not able to last. And it's like, oh, what do I do? Well, the inspiration was behind the fertility map. And the fertility map was all yellow and orange. Hmm. And I was kind of like, that just seems wrong. Um, like the Nile's yellow, it should be green. Like yeah. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing. Um, so I was like, well, I looked at vanilla and I, I kind of knew how risk. And I'm like, okay, well, there's so many regions though. And we have so many like tax income bonuses and, and whatnot, mm. um, for farming. What if I took all the way to tax income bonuses for farming and just put the farming and fertility is back to the word of it and, and vanilla and it worked and we needed to you know increase c costs and upkeep elsewhere but as far as like your base uh income that became the base income and we were able to represent the fertility map accurately um which is what we're about right we we, we want accuracy but we also want to be paired well with gameplay none none should overtake the other um one will have more sway over the other depending on the mod but in this area it's like yeah we want to be able to represent hey what's for, not for and uh reflect that and let the game i guess modders take the game away. in certain aspects they'll like cancel out certain features to make it the way they want and it's for me i've always had like an affinity for let's keep the wrong total war based features but let's find a way to best balance them yeah and 050 took away the fertility feature. It just l limited it to one to three. Where vanilla, vanilla had it all the way up to 14. And it's like, how do we bring that back and make it work? And that's kind of what we did. So yeah, I think that was like the that's like our base for the economy. And I think it makes it much more easier to edit. Um, and there's other ways to um, hurt population growth other than keeping the fertility. And yeah. we found that out with squalor. You can mod squalor in Realm Remote. So by being able to mod squalor, we were able to add back fertilities and keep this, the population growth issues. So yeah, the, the fertility is a great new addition because, of course, you can come onto this map mode, guys, if you don't know. And I've shown this map mode before on the uh, economy videos. And you can kind of go where the best fertility is to get some extra base money like in Seleucia for example or the the Nile I did get a question on one of my videos and I did answer it in the comments saying like why is there so much yellow everywhere should be green 
But that, of course, is to balance the game out, you know. Yellow is actually quite decent fertility, especially compared to the previous version of the mod. The low fertility is the orange and red. So yellow is medium, but I believe it's like 5 to 8. And 8 fertility is really good. Like, it's a decent level of fertility. So, yeah. you know, it, you, you know, it's not a problem at all having yellow. And I think, um, you know, the green is the really special fertility, like the Nile and Seleucia and stuff. And then the the, the bright green, the, the dark green, is, you know, exceptional fertility, like Patavium. But I, I do oh. have a question to ask you. Why is there a region called Hippo Diarrhea? <laughs> I'm guessing... Um... <laughs> That's the one above Carthage. Yeah, yeah. Hippo diuretus. <laughs> that's that's a total Jorolophian question, man. I don't know. And there There's is a lot of Jorolophian <laughs> um, mysteries in in our mod. <laughs> there is a region that, like uh, one region over from it called um, called Hippo. So uh, I assume it's to do with that, but. Yeah, hippo. Yeah, there's two, there's two hippos on the map. There's like the hippo regius that most people know, and then there's a second hippo that's a north of Carthage, and I think it had that diarrhea, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what it means in Greek, but um, I'm sure it means something that I think it has something to do with being on a lake or oh. something like that. Um, it's <laughs> I, I I I oh my gosh, I have it on the tip. I'm I'm wikiing it. Hippo and diarrhea. We, that's, that's hippo, what it means. <laughs> uh, um, there's Hippo Regius. Um, which is Royal Hippo, right? Given names, brand and product names, other. The hippo Disembunction. <laughs> oh, man. No, I'm just joking. Anyway. Ancient city, oh, yeah. Ancient city of Hippo Diaretus. Modern Bizert. Um... I'm trying to think. So, okay, it's so di diaritus means hippo divided by the water, right? Cool. Because there's that lake and then there's the ocean. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Not hippo diarrhea. <laughs> yeah, demonetized now, guys. Demonetized or uh, or not being able to put chapters on the videos for some reason. Because <laughs> I mentioned the word, like a, a word like diarrhea or something. Yep. Yeah. Classic. Shame on you. Thanks, YouTube. <laughs> Ahead of Shame time. Shame on you. Ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Let's talk. Let's talk a bit about you know the units then. And I believe I spoke to when I spoke to Balbor. He said there was about 150 new units, but. I think that doesn't include all the remastered units that he's done for all... Uh, well, him and Tone and all the rest of the art team have done for all the factions. So I think it'd be closer to 300 to 400, including the uh, the remastered units. Um, so what really, you know, sets your units apart, I guess? And, and, you know, you've gone down a full historical accuracy route as well, I would say, with the look, the feel of the units. So... Uh, why go that direction and and obviously you know they look amazing they look stunning so uh yeah why go down that direction of that full historical accuracy um with the units well two reasons oh uh, one would be mausolos and the other would be tone so <laughs> <clears throat> mausolos has done a ton of research over the years like way before it came out and he's always had like equipment and tunics and weapons. Um, but in Rome Total War, you could only make one model unit. It was Clone Wars. Yeah. So there was many units where it's like a Thoracotai or a Thoriophoroi where it's like, oh, how come they all have this? Well, you can only have one. Yeah. And he's like, oh, okay, I understand. He's like, technically speaking, though, like there should be some guys in there with these type of helmets or this. And I was like, well, then we'd have to make like a second unit, which would be weird for like armor. And you think about like the Romans, like <clears throat> you put Hastati with like a breastplate and then Princapes with mail, whereas like Hastati and Princapes were both like a mix of both. 
Yeah. Well, now you can do that. So remastered allows us to do that. So I think all the equipment that like Mosulus has researched and all the archaeological findings and all the descriptions from the ancient texts um, can now be brought to life. And then you got Tone, who Tone loves the variety. And so he pushed for the max limit per unit, which was seven models. And then you have like that times whatever to get to like 240 men or 160 men. And you have like a really diverse looking unit. Yeah. And um, I think those are the reasons why we did it. And does it take a lot of work? Yes. Does it pay off? Absolutely. And um, that's kind of why we do it. it if it was my call, I'm about speed. So I've probably been like, cool, let's just do one version, like OG, like we don't have time to make six other versions per unit. But Tone was confident in it and Balbor was able to streamline it to not take very long. And I'm just like, hey, I'm glad we listened to Tone and not me, because I'm liking it. Yeah, and I think everyone can agree that uh, they look amazing because Occasionally, I'll get uh, someone who'll watch one of the videos on the units that's never seen the mod before. And they'll either ask, like, what mod is this for Rome 2? Or they'll say, damn, I thought that was DEI for a second. So, you know, and there's how, however many years between those two games. I, I don't know, what's it, 10, 12 years or something like that? Mm, yeah. Um, so, like, <laughs> and that, this, is, this is being done with a 20-year-old engine, so... You know, I've got to say, hats off to the uh, the art team. It looks fantastic. They do look yep. amazing. And especially when you zoom in on a battle, which we'll move to a battle uh, relatively soon. Uh, when we zoom in on a battle, you can see, like, there's so much detail in there. Um, you know, <laughs> do I go as far as to say that they look better than the Total War Pharaoh units? <laughs> um... You can if you want. <laughs> I'm gonna say that they do. Okay. <laughs> there's no, there's no variation in the Total War Pharaoh unit, so that that's a uh, yeah. Uh, obviously, you know the people behind the armor and everything. There's not much you can do uh, do with them apart from just leave them as they are from the remaster. Uh, but the armor and everything, you know, as part of the unit, uh, just looks amazing. Um, I've got to say, it looks fantastic. So, yeah, hats off to them. Really, really cool. Uh, and it really does draw you in into the battles as well. Uh, and you can really tell, can't you? When, you? when you're playing a campaign and you're playing against the old units versus the new ones, like, it's a big difference. Like, you can even tell from being zoomed out a long way. So, uh, it's going to be amazing when all those units are fully finished. Uh, right at, right at when we get to 1.0, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, that's ex it's definitely exciting. Definitely exciting. I mean, I think about um, a fully finished mod, and like no matter where you go, you're fighting a very different army, and it's 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 just it's a it's like a dream. Like I said, it's like a dream come true, and we just gotta take advantage of it and make the best out of it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the new factions then. Do you personally have? A favorite new faction unplayable or playable it doesn't matter i've always been a sucker for nabatea nice but nabatea other than being put into the mod and given uh placeholder units isn't much so i can't say it's one of my favorites conceptually it's one of my favorites um uh it's tough man i like weird obscure factions <laughs> you so, do <laughs> um we'll get into that gonna, at some point <laughs> I'm, I'm going i'm going backwater and i'm going to say paphlagonia oh um, I, I would oh. definitely if i was to play i would be a masochist and decide to play as them um <laughs> oh, dearie me <laughs> well in ck2 i play as the sammy peoples like north of the norse and north of the Finns. Like, oh yeah ck2 is different game though man <laughs> yeah but you still get you still get your ass handed to you yeah um, that's true <laughs> if, if ragnar if ragnar from sweden comes up you're dead like there's no defeating him like no. he has like all the benefit he has like all the like cultural and warrior and yeah stuff like bonuses and you have like nothing <laughs> so, um i tell you what, I I, 
Paphlagonia, I, I like Selge or Selge. Um, <laughs> I think that's an interesting one. The Pisidians. Um, I like the both born area, so like both born them you know, or sure. Yeah. Um, um, and then honestly, I think that would be it. Like, I don't have a ton of interest in any of like the mainland Greek ones. Uh, I think Heraclea Pontica would be kind of cool to play. Yeah. Um, and um, Issa. Issa. Issa, yeah, Issa's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the obscure ones, you know, the ones yeah. that's like Greek, but not in Greek. <laughs> not like, in Greece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think mine's Bactria. probably. Uh... I, like, I like Bactria a lot. Oh, yeah, Bactria is really cool. <laughs> Uh, Bactria is a very cool name. I've actually got a Bactrian hat. You can't see this, but uh, the audience can. So, Bactrian helm, boys. Bactrian helm. <laughs> I will be. I'll be keen to see that in the, when I watch the video. I'm not sponsored, by the way, guys, by IKEA. So, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're very confused right now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll send you a picture later. You'll you'll see what I was wearing, but um, yeah. No, I'm good. Um, but yeah, uh, Pontic Pentapolis, I think, is my favorite. Just just because the dolphin. Yeah, not because of the uh, the icon, just because they they they're kind of a bit of a powerhouse on the Black Sea. Like they've got a load of cities. They they they're surrounded by pretty much barbarians to them. So yeah, um, I think yeah, they're one of my favorite new additions. Uh, well, I would have to say the Idrisians. I mean, Idrisians seem like a pretty cool faction now. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. So that yeah. whole area is kind of intriguing. Yeah, the whole of Thrace is really going to be a big battle. Well, everywhere that's been redone is going to be a big battle royale. But, you know, Anatolia at least is dominated by two real big powers. So, uh, well, it's Western Anatolia, should I say. So that's less of a battle royale. It's more of a 1v1. But... Uh, yeah, Greece and uh, Thrace, big battle royale. But yeah, I also like Pontic Pentapolis. Uh, uh, sorry, Her Heraclea Pontica as well. Uh, but oh, yeah, and the Cretans, of course. The Cretan, the Cretan boys, enjoying I forgot, themselves. I, forgot, I, I completely forgot. Uh, I have a new favorite. Go up, Chios. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Come on, oh. man. Oh dearie me! I want. I need that island campaign with Chios. Yeah, you only are. island only is Chios. You get no unique units. There's nothing special about them. It's just a cool color with a cool icon in the middle of a desolate island. Uh, they have to. Ah, oh, there we go. I was at Chios then. I was like, uh, why is Chios not on an island? But no, I was at Chios now. Uh, I mean, they have a cool icon. I like the color as well, but. Yeah, they. Um, I guess they had. They were a very fertile island. They had like what Moslo <laughs> said, tree. Oh yeah, something. that that tree. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know but <laughs> I, I'm down to play him. Yeah, uh, yeah. Favorite nation, man. Uh, but <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I like, I like you know all these additions of these small factions have been so cool. I'm learning the history of them as well has been pretty crazy, like really, really interesting. Um, a big shout out to Mal's Lost for that and, you know, a lot of the, and the historians for all the history that they brought into the mod through these factions. I mean, these factions are the representation of the history of the time. Um, so it's really cool to see them in the mod. It's like really, really cool indeed. And some of the histories are pretty crazy. So check that video out, especially the Cretans, you know, kidnapping the each Cretans other. And the... My weird, those weird Milesian tales. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mosca's favorite yeah. book, by the way. Mausolos' favorite book. Mausolos' yeah. favorite book as well, is it? Oh, right. Yep. I'll take my battery and <laughs> helm off now. So no one needs to see it anymore. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, no, really, really cool. I do love uh, the new factions. Uh, really, really good. And it just makes everything into more of a battle royale, which is even better. More <laughs> more fun to play. Well, I will say this. It's not just the factions. I think we added like 29 Greeks or 28 Greeks. We had like eight Thracians, seven Anatolians, and like that's cool and all. But like um, what I'm really proud of and like wanted to make sure I noted was um, we call them the CGs, the yeah. cultural generics. 
um, what those are are the Greeks, the yeah. Thracians, and the Anatolians. And these are all three factions. The Greeks being like the old school Greek cities, and then we made a Thracian version of Anatolian version. Of them. And they're yeah. pretty much like the rebels, but they move around, they're diplomatic, they are active, and they add depth to areas where we decided not to add a faction because honestly like work would have gone on forever <laughs> so um something like in uh, the middle of the peloponnese of the Ar yeah, three arcadian cities yeah um you have apollonia eparos um you have the athamania the kingdom of athamania in the middle of the mountains between eparos and macedon you have um you know uh the colony in Spain, Hemeroscopion, and Ancon, and Pharos near Issa. So, like, you have, like, um, Greeks that were independent. They were there, but they were not, like, what we would call, like, faction-worthy. Uh, kind of like how when the scientists, they rank planets. Um, like, you have Aerie, you have uh, Ceres, and you have um, Sedna, but they aren't planets. They're dwarf planets. So it's kind of like that. It's like the second classification. Um, and then you have the slave. And what cool is with the slave fact, rebel, um, whatever you want to call them, they uh, tend to dominate like areas of the map. And it's just a way to break up that monotony. And it adds a little bit of life to the map and a little bit of intrigue to the map. And um, I have some ideas that I'd want to do to make it even better. Um, but that's... That's a really cool feature. Yeah, really cool. Um, oh, I just got that picture. That is a background <laughs> song. Yes. Yes. I, uh, the, ancient, yeah. the ancient Ikeans. The ancient, yeah, exactly. The ancient Ikeans, man. Yes. Where's the Ikean faction? <laughs> <laughs> that actually sounds like a Greek, a Greek thing now you've said it like that. Uh, yeah, I know. Everyone's just seen me on camera taking a selfie as well, so uh, <laughs> not embarrassing <laughs> at all. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, no, it looks a bit better on the webcam, actually. But uh, yeah, <laughs> if it can look better. <laughs> if it can, you're yeah. right. That's the, British, that's the British turncoat if I've ever seen one before. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, you said you like Gangrep, but... Are you going to do a playing tall campaign as Gangra, make them the richest faction without any expansion? Oh man, I have no idea. I probably, <laughs> I probably get eliminated so quickly. Yeah. Pontus or Pontus or the Galatians or Heraclea Pontica would get to me eventually. Mm. I do genuinely though think that you could do, and this is something that I might do. So uh, we'll see. But you could do a Syracuse playing tall campaign where you just take Sicily. And then see how rich you can get. Whether you could become the richest nation just through Sicily. Uh, it would depend a lot on the amount of trade resources, I guess, in Sicily. But there is quite a few. So, yeah, that would be quite interesting. Or even Bactria. I guess Bactria would be the best option because of how rich they are. Um, but, yeah, it'd be interesting to see whether it's possible. Because, you know, Rome Total War is not built to play tall. So... <laughs> It's, no, it's not. It's built to play wide. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it would be interesting. I'm, I might do that. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, let's let's uh, move on to um, what... So, what's the feedback been like, then, on the mod from the beta testers? It's been really good. Um, there's obviously been issues. Uh, we fixed them. That's just great. I'm glad we have beta testers for that reason. Yeah. Um, but I'll give you a quote because I actually put out something this morning. Um, I won't name him by name, but one of our beta testers says, I believe that the board is set and ready from my past few campaigns. Another one says, it's bloody awesome. I do enjoy the number of settlements and the huge map. Can't wait for the full release. Nice. Um, another nice. says, the gameplay is fun. It flows well. Enjoy it. Um, and then even like Mosca and Vic, I was like, hey man, like what's What's going on? What should we fix? What should we change? Like, no, it's it's pretty good. And um, actually, be honest, Mosca's been Mosca's been saying it's pretty good since like July. Mosca was pretty hyped up <laughs> in July, saying like this is where it needs to be. Yeah, and he has not changed from that. So um, we are very excited, and like the the feedback's been really good. And there's a few people with their opinions and their 
and we're going to look into those. We're going to get deeper into those discussions after release. We don't have time to really test things out. Um, but there's always going to be preferences, be opinions. I think it's important that I, as a leader, just kind of can determine, like, okay, this is looking at right now, or no, we've already made a hard decision. On yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just, it's a balance. Um, but I'd say overall, um, we've gotten a really good, uh, sense of like what this is going to be like. In a lot of yeah, exactly. And I think, um, you know, the feedback from people that I've seen anyway, overwhelmingly has been positive. Um, you know, especially in the, with the videos, um, you know, a lot of people very happy with the changes. And of course, you know, you'll get your hands on it very soon, guys. So um, hopefully you do enjoy it. And hopefully the the, uh, the feedback remains positive after you've played it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. The RAS weekends thing, mm -hmm. because obviously been involved in it a little bit. Um, cool. and, uh, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say, like, I think it just shows how ambitious the mod is. I think I said this maybe maybe, uh, I don't know, a couple of videos ago or something like that, or maybe in one of the announcement videos. But I wanted to just say, like, it's, you know, it just shows how ambitious the mod has been, I think, doing something like this. It's almost to the point of being game level amount of previews. In fact, it's it, it surpasses most games because most games don't want to show you the nitty gritty and what goes in behind the game until it releases so you'll buy it and then have to discover that yourself so i think it surpasses you know most modern games in terms of the amount of information and media that you guys have been putting out there to let everyone know what's been happening and i think that's you know not to be underestimated there's not i don't i've, I've never seen a campaign like this for a mod and it's rare to see something so the only games that i can think of the only you know publisher that i can think of that has released this much content if we're not talking indie studios because of course indie studios release a lot to try and get more publicity for the game because they're an indie studio but like paradox maybe you know some paradox games like city skylines 2 has released a lot of stuff about it pretty much told you everything that's going to be in the game but that's slightly different it's a slightly different scenario slightly different type of game um, so I certainly haven't really seen anything like this before, and I think, I think it's, I think it's resonated well with everyone. So, uh, you know, big kudos to you guys for taking that step because it, it's a pretty brave step to put everything out there before, you know, it's ready. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's 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 definitely been risky business for sure, um, <laughs> but I think it's worth it. I mean, as a player of games myself. More so when I was younger than I am now. Yeah, but, apart from RIS. <laughs> yeah, I, it, yeah, it's like um, I don't play a lot of games, but to be honest, like with the way games are these days, with their prices, like that's a lot of money. Yeah, and a lot of people work very hard for what they earn, and maybe it's not buying for you, but it's buying for your your kid, mm. and you you want to know like, okay, what am I about to drop seventy dollars on? Yeah, $80, $60, whatever the amount. I remember back when it was like 20 bucks. But anyways, um, like they want to, you want to know. And like you hear about like Starfield. Like yeah. I bought Starfield. I've played it once. Ooh. I did not go back. Mm. And I'm thinking, man, like, huh. I was expecting <laughs> like an all immersive, like can't get off this game experience. From what I everything I've heard from that game studio, Bethesda, and like Skyrim and stuff, and I just don't have interest. I mean, it was cool, but I just—it's like one of those things where it's like, ah, I'm, a, I'm good. <laughs> Rome two, I mean, I brought the pre-order, and what they advertised was not what we got. Yeah. So I think it's for me. Um, like I said, I was in marketing and sales. I, sales is my profession, but I love marketing and advertising what I work. I, I want people to know what they're um when I did vanilla enhancement mod um on mod db every release was a very well put together article of what you're getting what what like some backstory behind it the why and um I I, I thought a lot of people enjoyed that and they knew what they were getting into <clears throat> and it made 
it feel as if like I was part of the community and like they could, I had an open door. They could talk to me. I was very, we had a, I had a little following on discord with it and it was cool. It was a lot of good, good times. And I think when you walk into a bigger situation, it's easier to just be like, well, they're just going to have to figure it out. And I don't think that's right for the people. And I think it's better for us to be like, Hey, this is what you're getting. Yeah. And like I said, at the beginning of the video, it's, it's like, we could make this huge guide, which I hope I do. Like one of my dreams and goals is to make a website mm. with all the information on it, with all your videos, like posted, um, or connected to like articles, um, lots of imagery, um, like not spreadsheets, but like diagrams and building trees and like graphs with units on it like maps with like different aor highlighted like i have that's a big dream of mine yeah uh but unfortunately i don't have all my free of for ris needs to be for actually coding yeah. ris and and doing this marketing stuff with you but it's important like i take inspiration from europa barbara from and from the old rome total realism website where um, you could access that website and you like learn everything you needed to know about the mod. Like they had all their like Europa Bar had like all their unit scrolling. You could read the unit has like their unit card. Yeah. I want to make something like that. And for me, doing the videos, I guess is like the more up to date, technologically like savvy way to get like the news out. Mm. And um, I just think it's important. Um, I think it's important to connect with the people who are following you and who playing your game um and it's important to show them that you're not hiding a building and you're not putting out like a crap product and not caring about like what they think i mean obviously we get some crazy people in here who are like like unreasonable demands for stuff that makes <laughs> no sense um but i'd say the vast majority of people are understanding and um i've had people say hey like take as long as you need to make this like yeah. i want a good experience don't feel rushed and that's really cool to hear from people in the community who just want like a good game and they they we do and they're happy what we do um, we've had a lot of people approach us about donations um, i do not accept donations for our team but i uh, the sentiment's there and i really appreciate it. so i think this is just a good way to do what's um right by the people who play the game yeah yeah, definitely. And like I say, overwhelmingly it's been uh, been very positive the response and I think I think everyone appreciates the amount of information because a lot of the time uh, a mod just releases an update and then that's the first you hear about it and I think I mean, obviously it depends on the mod and you know, modders modders don't work for money, they work for free. So modders can do what they like in in my opinion in terms of how they want to release their mods if they want to just release it and then that's when people hear about it. I think that's fine. That's completely fine, especially when they're doing a lot of a lot of smaller updates. But I think with oh, something yeah. this big, like I think everyone appreciates that amount of information coming out as well. Um, and ultimately, like from my side, you know, I want the, the you know the the uh, the playlist that I've got on my channel. I've got RTR Imperium Directum guides. I've got unit rosters, uh, and uh, I've got updates and i've got the ras weekends specifically for 0.6 and i want that to be there as a receptacle of all you know the information all the guides that you guys need when you start the game play the mod um you know that that receptacle of information there for you guys so that you guys at home when you start playing the mod and playing the game oh uh, i'm gonna fight ponters next i wonder what their roster is you can have a look at their roster on the game but if you want to have a bit of a closer look, oh, I'll go see Red Zed's video on, on that. So you guys know at home, uh, you know, that there's a receptacle there for, of all the information available on the mod uh, and that you can just access it by going through one of those playlists, especially the guides and stuff uh, on the economy and all that sort of thing if you get a bit stuck. Um, yeah, and those economy guides, I mean, <clears throat> obviously the economy, the economy will be tweaked, but like... You know, we and you were talking about like when we do patches that we're going to do a patch and a change in the economy. Hey, if you want to know about the economy, check out this. Um, on top of that video, they have tweaked this area. Yeah. But that main economy video will always be there. 
unless there's like an overhaul and then you just, I like it because it allows us to update it as things go on and again it's 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 for the player first and it allows the player to go to like the chapter maybe they don't want to work yeah exactly yeah they can go to that specific chapter and there there you go yeah exactly so uh yeah that's fantastic um so i think we'll skip across to a battle now guys so there'll be a little snip snip a little cut so we'll see you in a second so we are back here guys with a bit of a uh a 3v3 should we say or well no a battle royale with four factions i accidentally made the seleucids not me i was supposed to just have a single letter right <laughs> i have an army so i'm not going to try and control them they can just do what they want which is stand there and and wait for everyone to die and then maybe mop up everyone so that, that'll be quite funny uh, but let's talk a little bit about what what's been the most difficult thing for 0.6 then would you say um well there's been a lot of difficulties but i'd say the one i would say that would probably be the one that kind of is the root of all causes is lack of time yeah um i mean if i didn't have a full-time job if i wasn't active in my church if i didn't have a social life if I didn't have responsibilities, if I didn't have a family, and I could just spend 24-7 uh, on the computer, maybe 060 would have been coming out earlier. Or, uh, maybe we'd have more in or finished. But obviously that's untrue. Obviously that's extremely unhealthy if I didn't have in. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm very healthy because of those things that I have in my I'm thankful for them, but... Yeah, it's just time, man. Like, time. I yeah. always, uh, can't tell you how many, like, early mornings I'm fully dressed. So think, like, professional attire, right? Yeah. And I'm sitting at my computer desk, like, trying to code in some things or fix some things or, um, test some things or I'm making a spreadsheet. And it's like, I'm looking at the watch. It's like, 15 minutes, I got to get to work. And it's like, it just, Whenever I can squeeze in like an hour, jump on the PC and do this real quick, and then me make these messages, send these messages to people, and let's get this, and where we are on that, heard from me on that, and it's like, yeah. and I always, I think the biggest question I've asked myself is, or I've, the biggest statement I've said over this period is like, man, I wish I had more time. I wish I had more time. I wish I had more time. Um, or and then like. I don't get on the computer and do much at night because I'm just exhausted from the day. Yeah. When I get home, I don't want to mod. I want to watch you play the mod, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, uh, but seriously, like, I don't have the mental cap capabilities to focus in on, like, my coding gets really sloppy and I spend more time trying to figure out what I did to cause a crash. Um, than actually modding because I, I get tired and then it figures I figured like oh I forgot this comma or forgot this add this and so I try not to do anything so then I got my early mornings off yeah. well it's like your two days off you want to enjoy your days modding more like work so it, it, it's just that's what it is I mean it's a lot there's a lot of expectations on um, yeah, we're exactly. doing something nobody's done before. So, um, time. Yeah, I'd say yeah, that that'd definitely. be the most difficult thing. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean that's, and like like we've said before, you know, you guys are not paid. Like this is all through generosity and and passion. Um, so yeah, completely makes sense. You know, um, that <laughs> that you would want more time. Uh, and you know, I, I'm, I'm the same way as well. You know, you always, you always want to make more videos or do a little bit more editing or, or edit it in a bit of a different way that'll take a little bit longer. But you just, you just don't have the time and you can't. And that's, you know, that's part of the reason why the Seleucid campaign ended up uh, losing the intros because if I'd have kept on with that, I just wouldn't have managed to finish it by the time 0.6 comes out. So. Uh, you know, sometimes a bit of a bit of sacrifice is needed, I guess. 
Um, yeah, the, the, the tasks take so much time. And I think the biggest disappointment for me with the development was when I said at the very end of July, I was going on a vacation. At the, it was right when RAS Weekends was. And I made an announcement to the team and to the beta testers and to everyone. I said, okay, October 7th. And I'm like thinking in my head, that gives us plenty of time to finish. And here we are, it's October yeah. 10th, I mean, October 11th, and I'm, I've made the decision just like three days ago. Hey guys, so these things are not going to be able to make it. Yeah, we yeah, I mean, have a series of patches that come out after the release. And it's just like the fact that I even had to say that is frustrating, but things take a long time. Like we didn't know that the that weird script causing crash was going to happen. We didn't yeah. know that it was the script that was causing the crash. We thought it was the map. No, we thought it was traits and ancillaries map. And then we realized it's the script. And yeah. it's not just anything on the script. It's money tied to the script. It's just, but how are we supposed to know? And um, it just takes so much time to figure things out. And it, it was frustrating when we had fixed and they're like, okay, well, that's my last test for the day. I gotta go to bed. I'll try again. Yeah. It's like, and there, and there goes another day, and then there goes another day. And like, I'm all about progression. I love to make progress. I like to know that we made, we went in the right direction. And there was days where it was just like nothing happened. Yeah. Or like maybe I'm busy and I come home and I check Discord, and like hardly anything was said. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. like. <laughs> We have a team full of people. How come some? It's like, it's just you want things to get done, and you're so excited for them to get done, but then when you when the sobering reality comes, that yeah, through. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, it makes you like take a deep breath and be like, okay, we're in for. <laughs> and um, like I said, it's taught us a lot of lessons. It's taught me a lot of lessons, and um, I'll just say it now. Like, well, I guess we could talk about it in the future, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, things will change. Let's just say that based on the yeah. difficulty yeah. that we experienced. If we want to keep RAS alive and something, and not like something that like, oh yeah, remember that RAS team? They were so good. Too bad they didn't work out. I don't want that to be a conversation. So oh, yeah. adjustments need to be made. Yeah, uh, you are cutting out a little bit every now and then, uh, just to let you know. Um, so I don't know whether the mic's just cutting you off slightly. Okay, um, can you hear me okay now? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's good. It was just like okay. every at the end of the sentence, every every now and then. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, that's a, you know, time. Time is the uh, the immortal enemy, I guess. It's uh, constantly uh, constantly there and uh, <laughs> very hard to get hold of a lot of the time. Uh, I, oh, yeah. Ironically. <laughs> ironically, I know. Yeah. So, uh, what have you enjoyed the most then about 0.6? What I've enjoyed the most is um, realizing that we've done something like 050. We did something that's never done, been done before, but it was still kind of like basic. Yeah. Now I I truly feel like I've like we've been able to pull something off that's never been done before. Mm. So. And I'm talking not just the map, but the amount of regions on the map, and all the factions. Yeah, definitely. Like, who would have thought Issa? <laughs> like, nobody even knew it existed before this mod. Yeah. I didn't really know it existed. Paphlagonia. <laughs> Paphlagonia. Cell, cell, cell gay, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Like, um, how Crete was such a mess. Um... That's what I'm proud of. The, the Thracian tribes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. man, like, it's just so cool. And then you start thinking about the future. Like, okay, what when we when we work on this culture group? Or what about when we work on this part of the map? Or this or that? And you're like, whoa, like, the possibilities are real. And, yeah. like, it's just, um, that's what kept, even through, like, the lowest lows, Knowing, like, hey, man, like, this, this is what you signed up for. It'll all be worth it at the end. That's yeah. what keeps me going. Yeah, definitely. And I think the results speak for themselves, really, don't they? Like, 
you know, as we've spoke about before, the results keep on coming and they do speak for themselves. So, uh, yeah, I think it's amazing, really, uh, what's been done so far. And I just can't wait for, well, <laughs> I guess we, we can wait, but we uh, for, for 1.0, because that's going to be something else, really, I think. Uh, yeah, we're, gonna be... we're yeah, I don't know when that's going to be. <laughs> I don't know what my life is going to look like or what your life is going to look like. But yeah, we, that'll be a day. When when we're both 80 and the release date yeah. is released for uh for uh, for 1.0. <laughs> I tell you what, Rad, I tell you what. This is going to be on YouTube. Let's yeah. uh if we ever get to that point, we're both still around. Let's uh let's reference this clip. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in that release video yeah definitely well when we get to uh when we get to that point anyway when we get to the 1.0 we'll see how far off we are from 80 and whether we're closer to 80 then or now <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, i'm joking i'm joking uh but yeah no fantastic um so let's talk a little bit about the ai then um so I don't think there's that much you can really do about the AI, is there, in, uh, in, uh, with the engine and with the uh, modding tools that you have? Um, no, not really. Not what, not what like people would expect. Yeah. Um, the AI, like we have, I think you've, we've said this before, but the AI, the AI gonna AI. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> it, it, there is no rhyme or reason to what the AI does. There's gonna, be, rightly so. Put in the comments well yeah that's why i can't find this mod and i can't get behind romer mask they were never able to change the AI. it's it's again it's a mindset thing it's i have this mindset and i i need a superior ai to the game and if i don't get that i don't okay well maybe not superior competent yeah the ai in rome total war has never been competent it's been <laughs> erratic random but i think that's what makes it what it is. Yeah. I think that's, that's part of why it's so fun. Um, like, it's predictable, but it's funny. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I think we're seeing a different version of this AI because of all the depths that we've added. So yeah, we're seeing the AI, um, you, instead of like the 21 factions you got, I think we have like 99, like 104 something like that factions right now. You're seeing how the AI works. Yeah, definitely. Uh, fighting for control of a an area. And so um, diplomacy is real. And I, I like what Pharaoh was able to do with, when they recognize your strengths, they try to become your protectorate. Um, but the moment they sense weakness, they'll backstab you. Yeah, and I think that's kind of cool. Like it's total war. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, we can't get a full diplomatic experience in that case. Um, there are little ways for us to adjust the AI here. Um, we're going to be looking into doing. Uh, Mosca and I are probably going to go through each of the the minor factions and just adjust them just a tad to be where we feel like they should be. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, we're very happy with it. And um, it's not necessarily like one thing. Hey, let's make the AI. Or it's like, yeah, we're we're happy with it. Um, what I was saying is that like you can't make it better, but you can add more factions and you can add more settlements, and that somehow it kind of makes it better. And like we're gonna tweak. There's ways to tweak the personalities a bit, but that's about it. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Uh, and yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the uh, the AI for a Rome Total War <laughs> has always been. <laughs> it is what it is. It's it, it, you yeah. know, it's, it's like I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. It's always been a, a jolly uh, a jolly AI, shall we say? Yeah, yeah, it uh, does its thing. Yeah, it does what it wants, and uh, sometimes there's no rhyme or reason, and sometimes sometimes it can catch you out. To be fair, and honestly, playing a lot of the uh, a lot of the um, <laughs> a lot of the classical Total War games, you know, it's it's pretty similar to the to the AI in Med Two because it, it is the same AI basically. Um, but 
Even Empire. I would say I would say Rome Rome AI is better than Empire, definitely, because Empire AI is like Empire AI can't catch you out. Like there's there's no way Empire AI can catch you out. Like it literally will run a hundred units at canister shot over and over and over again <laughs> for for no reason. So uh, yeah, you know Empire Empire AI I would say is worse than uh, Rome AI definitely. Um, but yeah, the Rome AI occasionally it'll just catch you out like. You'll be caught napping and be like, what the hell? How has it done that? <laughs> um, right. Like, like, out of nowhere, Armenia attacking you in your campaign. Like, that was like, uh, like what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, they'll uh, they'll just, uh, you know, they'll come out of nowhere, attack you, and you'll be like, oh, shit. And uh, I think, especially with the amount of regions and the amount of stuff, you need that backstabbing. And, of course, if you don't want to be backstabbed, guys, play on easy. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the solution uh you'll still get backstabbed but not as much um but the more the you know the more difficult difficulty you play on the more the ai wants to wants to kill the player so just play on a easier difficulty if you're finding the backstabbing too much but ultimately it's a pretty good representation of the times because as we spoke about with mausolos all of these people hated each other and all they would do is constantly betray each other that's that was pretty much their life life de dedication was <laughs> to beating the rivals that they hated so much so uh yeah <laughs> yeah it, it's it's a good representation and you think about it like we have rome and carthage is like the two big boys left um yeah as far as like work but other than that all the cultures that we have left are like they're constructed like constructed made up of like tons of different tribes and city states and stuff yeah and so naturally speaking um they always were at war with each other yeah and they were rivals like the celts the iberians the germanics the illyrians dacians scythians like arabs uh the the, the libyans like all these cultures yeah. that we haven't touched yet all tribalized for the most part Mm. And they fought against each other. And even if they, like, advanced in civilization and had, like, states and kingdoms, like, they were still small states and small kingdoms that had rivalries and everything like that. So, um, I like the backstabbing nature of it. Because, um, even the Diodoki, uh backstabbed each other oh, all yeah. the time. So, it's just what it is. And it's fine. And, like, wrong, it's, it's, it's just wrong total war. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I'm totally happy with it. Yeah, and, um, you know, uh, yeah, even the Diadoki backstabbed each other. I mean, there's there's very few uh, examples of friendships in this world at the time. So, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is. It is what it is. And, uh, you know, the battle AI is, is Rome Total War AI, and it always will be. And I think it's generally pretty competent. Um, you know, it's it like I say, it's a lot better than uh, the Empire AI. And most of the time... It uh, it does pretty uh, pretty normal stuff, stuff you would expect it to do. Um, so like you know, it doesn't do crazy stuff where it's just going to charge, uh, you know, charge its most valuable units all alone into into things. So you know, it's it's generally pretty decent, and it's you know, well, really good to play with. Like you know, it's uh, I mean, I, <laughs> I've been playing a, a new game recently that the AI is not very not very good in, and. and uh, I much prefer playing battles in this game, of course. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm not even a battle stan either, guys, in case you didn't know from all my nerdy campaign management st uh, stuff that I am a campaign management stan. I prefer to campaign manage than, uh, than play battles. So, yeah, uh, I'm a true nerd. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> like, uh, even I really love the battles in this mod. Um and it is fantastic. And again, just the units being so beautiful does does really, really, uh, you know, make you want to get on the battlefield. Especially when you got new units and just check, you know, check them out and see what you uh, what you've been missing, really, with how beautiful they are. Um, but yeah, uh, finally, let's talk a little bit about the computer requirements. So, for the computer, you know. What do you reckon you need to, uh, you know, not exact system uh, requirements, but 
what is, you know, sort of the level of computer you're going to need to uh, to play the mob? Well, you're going to need at least 45 gigabytes of yeah. uh, storage. Um, pretty big, hefty thing because uh, of all the 4K textures and models and whatnot. So that's a lot. So make sure you have that. I always recommend having uh, like a hard drive. You could just put it on a hard drive or put everything else on a hard drive and then use your solid state to run this. Now, I am not a computer with at all. Uh, at all. I don't I don't really know what requirements say you need that space. Um, I would say that you need like a decent graphics card. If you don't have a decent graphics card, make sure you're playing on all settings on low. Regardless of what graphics card you're playing on, make sure you have your sky settings set to low or lowest, whatever is the lowest um, when you play. Um, because uh, just that sky is overwhelmingly powerful. So yeah. um, and it doesn't make a big difference if you put it on lowest it, and it free up, uh, like not space, but it'll uh, make the game run smoother. Um, yeah. RAM, you definitely need at least uh, 16 gig gigabytes of RAM. Mm. Uh, we are over that threshold. But you and uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM is good right now um, yeah. to have available. I would not be running a bunch of other stuff in the background game. Um, I know this with my computer. Whenever I run Rome Remastered, the fans come and you can hear them. And when I turn off Rome, yeah, yeah. the computer goes silent again. So the computer is going to be working while you play the game. And so do your best to take care of your computer while you're playing the game. If you're the type that has like a ton of internet tabs and other program stuff open, if you seriously want to play this and have the best experience, I would recommend taking all that off and down and just having only Roam or Master up. It's definitely helped my computer. My computer is relatively new. Yeah. Um, I got it a couple years ago. Um, I would say that's about it. Again, I don't know system requirements that much, but you need space. I would uh, have a decent rig. I can run on older rigs, but it's going to be slow loading screens. Um, sometimes the interns can be about a minute, but uh, most people are telling me about 30 seconds. And yeah. um, it's just because all the factions and all the settlements takes a long time to go through there. If you can get through that, then you'll be just. Yeah, exactly. Uh, perfect. Well, uh, we're going to we're going to jump off here for a second to go through some fun questions. So we'll cut here again, guys, and we'll see you in a second. So we have in front of us some form of crime to humanity, I've got to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is, so me and Mosca a while ago did a, uh, a RAS faction ranking video where we ranked all of the factions, every single one, guys. So check that video out. And in that, we actually came up with a list that is very different from both of our our actual lists. So we had a pretty good compromise. Um, but now, A. Howell's list is on the left, and mine's on the right in in, in my real-life list of the, of the factions that I love to play, my favorite factions to play, and the ones that I don't like to play quite as much. Uh, <laughs> and A. Howell's is on the left. Now, <laughs> uh, to be fair... I can agree with some of those factions at the top. Um, Beautiful. Not, not, not the, not the RDA I though. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with that? <laughs> hey man, I'm an under, I'm an, I'm a fan of the underdog and I'm a fan of the obscure. I mean, and the RDA I I'd say are obviously, or are arguably one of the crappiest factions and most obscure factions yeah. in our modern current time so um that's that's my faction right there I, like uh, the bosporans adrissians rome bactria uh i can kind of i can understand being right up there as stratos like even carthage kind of but like not in the mods <laughs> right um but yeah the second line though is more interesting because parthia yes Kimbri, Trinovantes, Massalia, both Numidias in a row. 
it's kind of triggering me right now. Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> um, again, um, interesting start positions, corners of the map, um, dark world, mysterious. Like, you're kind of starting in a backwater. Like, I like the challenge. Yeah. Um, I like, I, I always kind of like playing like a Britain's campaign and because you're kind of just out there by yourself. I like that. Um, Kimberly, kind of the same deal. You kind of start at the tip of Denmark by yourself. Uh, Sokka, you're by yourself. Uh, Massalia, um, outskirts of the Greek world. Uh, the Numidians, uh, worst factions in the game, arguably. And you have uh, one of the biggest challenges <laughs> in Carthage. That was my favorite campaign to play as, as Rome Total Reels and Platinum Edition was the Numidia campaign. Fair. Athens and Sparta, you know... I think that's more like a meme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like both. Um, I think both have challenges, and I like. I just kind of like the rivalry, and then I, I'm kind of with you. Like the Parney, um, I've liked them for a long time. So, um, yeah, it's just I have more sentimental reasons behind a yeah. lot of this. Like the real reason for the Illyrians, like the RDAI, is I have a soft spot in my heart for them because Realm Total Realism was the only mod that did anything for them when I was like a kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Europa Barbarorum didn't, Roma Serectum didn't, none of the vanilla mods did, only Realm Total Realism. And I always kind of had like a fascination about them. So that Bactria, again, from my Realm Total Realism days, they were one of my favorite factions. Um, they're kind of out in the, the outskirts of the Greek world. The Achaeans, I just like their symbol. I like where they, I like their colors. I like their units. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bosporans, I just love, again, the obscurity of the area that you're, they're in. Same thing with Pontus. Pontus was one of my original favorite factions as a kid growing up. And the Idrisians, I'd have to say I'd fallen in love with the Idrisians because of all the cool units they have and just learning more about the Thracians. So, yeah. Um, there's sentimental reasons there. I've never played any of these, <laughs> um, but a lot of these are based off like campaigns I used to play yeah. and other mods yeah. in vanilla. Rome, I like Rome a lot actually. Like Rome is, I always play the Julii when I play vanilla. So you're a Roma boo. Um, I I wouldn't say I'm a Roma boo because I, I don't. I <laughs> in tone tone would hate me for this. I really don't care for the legions mm. or auxiliaries. I care. I like Republican Rome. Yeah. Um, I like Hastati and Principes over legions. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, and I then mean, after after that, it's just kind of like yeah, like I just kind of like yeah, whatever. After that, like <laughs> as you can tell, I don't like mainland Celts. Yeah, <laughs> you can kind of tell that. Like, yeah. um, I mean, you've got the uh, the Britons. Uh, I've got the Britons in in my lowest <laughs> lowest tier. You've got the Kimbri up there as well. I've got them in my lowest tier. <laughs> And the RDAI. <laughs> and the Masse Masse Saley. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, interesting. Different Difference of opinion. But the Ptolemies and the Seleucids being, like, in a Phoebes. Yeah, man. Um, too, much, <laughs> too much city management, bro. <laughs> yeah, fair. I see that, and I'm like, I don't got time for this. Bithynia, though, as well. You like Odrysia, so what's wrong with Bithynia? Oh, uh, I never... I just... Honestly, um, I completely forgot about them, and I was like, oh, they put them here. <laughs> I also so, like so I was like, if I completely forget about it, then it's probably not yeah. something yeah. I'm into. Uh, but also the uh, Cappadocians being in a Phoebe's and not being in Crappadocia, what's... Uh... <laughs> you know, I just... That's I my like favorite. Being, That's my favorite I one. Like, I feel like they were being oppressed, and you were in Moscow were the oppressors, <laughs> and I just wanted to let them know that they had love in the world. I I mean, in my actual one, I put them in decent. So you know, all you Cappadocia stands, don't uh, you know, don't don't you know, attack me for uh, saying Cappadocia yeah. all the time. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're, you're, uh, you, what, what's it called? You're um, K Fabian. Oh, you're hating. Yeah, you're you're you have so much hate in your heart. <laughs> you know? Nah, it's just K Fabe, man. It's just K Fabe. <laughs> So uh yeah no interesting I just wanted to I just wanted to uh you know confront you on this <laughs> on this monstrosity of hey. a tier list. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm like, I think it's a weak work of art man to I mean, their own. Yeah I mean exactly uh, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder right like yeah. I mean mine mine is mine is not 
you know, lots of people will disagree very heavily with mine. So I, you know, these are just these these ones that I did. Like the ones we did with Mosca, we tried to do it a bit more objectively. Like, you know, how strong they are, whether it's a fun campaign, what their rosters like, you know, how uh, their starting position. Like, whereas the ones, you know, the way I I kind of did it. You did it with sentimentality. I just did it with ones that I like to play. So exactly, you know, everybody does it their own way. And- yeah. Although the bell, would, ga- you don't like Celts, do you? You're not, you're not a big Celt fan. <laughs> you know why? It's because I spent all my childhood slaughtering them as a Julia player. <laughs> oh God, God, so I hate yeah. goals. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's, you took that to heart. <laughs> yeah, there's some kind of thing about Gauls where I'm just like, ah, I'm not really a fan. But I like Germans though. I, I do like the German. Um, I'm surprised I didn't put. Oh, it's because the Kimbri. Um, but like in vanilla, I liked playing as the Germans because they were just kind of out in the mysterious dark forest. Mm-hmm. And I kind of liked that, but I um, like the, the Gauls, Gauls weren't, <laughs> the Gauls were just kind of like an annoyance to the Romans and, um, yeah, they needed to be dealt with. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> 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 I like the Celts. So Belgai, Belgay or whatever, however you want to say it. They're one of my, I think they're one of the strongest factions in the game and they're pretty good fun. Um, but yeah, I like the I like the Celts. I think when the Celts are done, like uh, this list will change quite a bit. I'll have a few more Celts towards the top, but when they're remastered, um, so yeah, I like having a big Celtic horde come and uh, come and smash some armies. But ultimately, you can't beat a good Seleucid cataphract or a nice Parthian horse archer. They're just going to beat everyone every day of the week. So you know. They're my top two. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> but yeah, no, this is pretty funny. I, 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 I just uh, do you want to? Do you want to? Um, I've been shitting on your list, by the way. So, so shit on my list for a bit. <laughs> um, let's see, for years, let's see, what do I not like about yours? Rogue. Well, already, the, rogue one. already the lucid at the top. I'm like, come on. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're, you're definitely a masochist. Yeah. Um, I can. I'm down with a lot. Like again, Bithynians. I just forgot they existed. <laughs> Bel the Belge. Like they're kind of OP currently. Yeah, they are pretty it's, OP. It's kind of like. I mean, if you want an easy campaign, uh, great fun. I'd have to agree, except for the Ptolemies. I don't think that looks like great fun. <laughs> um, Pergamon, I think would be fun. Syracuse Rose, yeah, decent. I mean. I guess Rome and Carthage. I guess I get where you're coming from with Carthage. They kind of suck. I know they're not going to be done before the Romans, but I know they're going to be desperately in need of being done after the Romans because they're just yeah. they're just a terrible faction in in our mod because of their weird root unit rosters. So that's going to be a lot of fun developing them into something that we know they should be. Um, Rome, yeah, that needs to be higher. Armenia is. Armenia is an interesting one. I think that's a forgotten one a lot. I put them in my Agema. I think people just forget about them for whatever reason. They have a unique position, unique unit roster. When we get to that area of the map and make more factions, yeah. like the Caucasians and Iberians and uh, Albanians and Colchians, like I think it'll make an Armenian campaign a little bit more interesting because you have some states to the north to deal with. You have Atropatine to deal with, Cappadocia to deal with. Um, and then the, the giant Seleucids to the south of you. I don't care about the Aetolians simply because I don't like yellow like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can. I put in. I just don't care about that f- faction symbol. I'm not a yellow fan. Um, isn't it weird that I base my I'm basing my stuff off like colors and sentimental yeah. <laughs> values and, and memories? Uh, same thing with the Galatians, like. Terrible color for me. <laughs> I I mean um, I I think if the Galatians were done, uh, like uh, remastered, I think I would put it in them in love them because I yeah. think like that's be so, so interesting that campaign because yes, you know, only Celt in that region and yes. you know you're fighting big empires and completely different you know play style to you as well in terms of their army composition so. When they're done, I will definitely be moving them up to uh, up to love them. Uh, same so, thing with Armenia, probably, or or at least great fun for Armenia and Carth- yeah. Carthage and Rome. I but... think 
I think the Sarasis will be really cool when we finish the Nomads because the Sarasis were like more like a Hellenistic Nomad. Yeah. Um, the Lugii are going to be a lot of fun because they're Germanic, but they're not like there's like Slavic mm. uh, influence there. Um, Scordisky should be a lot of fun, especially once like all the Illyrians are in and the Dacians are in. Like the whole Balkans is going to be super fun. Yeah. Once the factions are in. Um, I think Gaul will be a lot of fun when we finish the Celts because it's going to just dictate, it's going to basically simulate like how divided all the tribes were. And that's yeah. why you're like Caesar was able to do what Caesar was able to do. Um, Boeotians have had a soft spot for them. Where did I put them? Uh, Epilectoi. Uh, yeah, I've always had a little bit of a soft spot. Them and Cyrene, they're kind of forgotten. Um, our, the Iberians, I put low, kind of low for mine. Editani, no, but they're just kind of like stagnant right now. Like once, once we do Iberia, I think you're gonna you're gonna have to do a new tier list for sure. Oh yeah, when um, when it gets to 1.0, we'll do a proper tier list. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then I might um, be just putting them all in really good. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I think Atropatine should get a little bit more love. They actually have the closest thing to a Persian roster in the game. Mm. Um, I think they just should get a little bit more love. I, I think a Tropatine, it would be a challenge. They have an interesting unit roster and they're kind of obscure. So I, yeah. where did I put them? I didn't even put them that high, but I would probably put them higher, especially once they're finished. Yeah. The need. I mean, the I'm, need. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and I didn't even put Cappadocia on the bottom. Uh, well, good for you, man. I'm glad you. Um, I'm glad you. You've repented from your hateful ways. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, well, while everyone gazes upon this, uh, this glorious tier list. Um, in fact, no. Let's uh, let's uh, start a new battle, uh, and we can talk while the battle's loading in and stuff as well. I guess. Um, yeah. Doesn't matter too much. Um, so, what are you most proud of with the mod so far? So far. <laughs> uh i kind of touched it on earlier but i'd say like the, the the balance between the historical depths and the um clean gameplay as of 060 so i know the gameplay is a little wonky in 050 and i'm sure you've noticed that um with like buildings and stuff <laughs> yeah. like you're building all these stables for law and yeah <laughs> um, i think there's a little bit of confusion on a few things too like all the negative tax things there's just like a lot of movement with numbers so i'm really most proud of like the fact that we're going to be giving you like an out of, i feel it's going to feel like an out of the box game um yeah. as far as like how it plays um obviously it's not an out of the box game right now it's content but i guess if you want to look at today's gaming standards and game development standards <laughs> um we're just doing dlcs you know like yep um we're doing deal free dlcs you know so might as well release um, part of the game as a dlc of. if you can make more money huh yeah right but um <laughs> i i really like that I'm, I'm most proud of my team i think we have a wonderful team and um it's infuriating to work with them sometimes, but <laughs> I'd say 95% of the time, I'm very happy to be a teammate with all of them. And I'm sure it, it's infuriating for them to work with me because I can be very difficult to work with at times. Um, I can, I definitely um, will speak my mind and sometimes it doesn't necessarily go in the way I'd want it to, but we all know each other very well and we all have passion. We all recognize recognize that and we give each other a lot of grace and there's a lot of you know understanding if we get a little harsh with each other there's forgiveness and like yeah. the amount that it takes a really good human being to be able to do all that and like come through with uh you know still alive <laughs> yeah exactly. we have we have had some brutal debates about <laughs> the most petty things like I've a seen name a couple of, a, of them <laughs> a name of a building took a month to figure out so i'll just i'll just say that that was uh that was a very trying time is yeah. when we were trying to figure out the name of a building i mean so i and I'm, guess what that name of the building didn't even get into well it is in the game but like <laughs> kind of in a weird way 
Yeah. And Mosca's calling me and he's not going to get an answer. <laughs> well, I'm 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 always helpful in uh in the debates when you and Mosca are having a bit of a debate and I just put boxing memes in the chat, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that doesn't annoy either of you. <laughs> Um, yeah so what i know i i think it's funny like it's at the end of the day it's a mod i mean we get passionate about it but i don't have hard feelings towards any no no of course of course and it's the yeah it's it's just a, a healthy debate I, w I would say um so yeah what, what would you say is your i mean we've seen your tier list but what would you say is your favorite faction and unit that's currently in the game doesn't have to be playable could be unplayable um one of my favorite units would have to be the Mastianian Infantry for Paphlagonia. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, on your unit preview, they uh, were missing a PBR, so they looked like weird. Um, yeah, was that when they looked dirty? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I'd say another faction or unit... I think the, the Asaian... For Issa, the Issaian Hoplites are pretty cool. They have a cool little helmet that only mm. they get. Um, who else? Yeah, I'd say that as far as factions are concerned, Argos. I like the, the symbol of Argos. Yeah. I think it'd be cool to give them a try. They're an emergent faction. I said Paphlagonia already. I said Issa already. Chersonesis and Chios, I think, are really cool looking. Um, so yeah, but I would say those, I think those would be like super cool. Uh, I, I, for whatever reason, that Chios Island campaign. <laughs> That's is, stuck um, in your head. <laughs> that is stuck, man. I don't know. I, I think that should be your next, your next campaign. <laughs> the Chios <laughs> Island Hoppers. Yeah. Oh. The Chios Island Hoppers. Sounds that's, like that's a new, that's a new unit. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like a sounds like a an American football team. <laughs> oh yeah. The Chios Island Hoppers are coming, man. And uh I've gotta say, I love the look of the Indian elephants because they've been remastered. Um and I hadn't seen them before before maybe the Mosca video. And I'd always just seen the Seleucid uh sort of uh Greek elephants and the Indian ones look amazing i love them um but yeah sorry getting uh getting slightly uh slightly <laughs> digressing there slightly so what is your favorite addition slash difference to 0 0.6 would you say um there's a lot i mean i could just say like the factions in general the unit the unit yeah you know, that's a little yeah. basic um i really like the representation as a whole though like um I'd say the culture system, and we haven't really dived too much deep on that with videos or anything, but because the culture system mechanically is trash, but um, I like being able to represent the different cultures. Um, and like I said, there will be a video on that, but like Macedonians and Ionians and Dorians and Paphlagonians and Phrygians, like, if you can, it's just, re for me, just the overall presentation of what the world was at this time, I think. Yeah. Is, favorite thing um gameplay it's hard for me because i don't play that much right? and so it, it's not what i'm thinking about yeah. that's why I, i'm so happy that you're around mosca's around vic and other people who play because my whole thing is like okay well how are we going to represent this how yeah. are we going to represent yeah. this and then when i get it i'm like okay so how how would it be good to play as them um yeah yeah so yeah, I would say just overall representation. I feel like we've done the best that we can do. And the Greeks are the hardest. Um, so it feels really good to kind of be on the tail end of it, knowing that the cultures ahead of us are going to be not so much work as far as like research and stuff. Like there's only yeah. so much we know about the other cultures, whereas like the Greeks, it's just like you can just, you could go on and on and on and on. It's, it's mm. so much. So it's kind of cool that we tackled them first and they're out of the way. Um, and now we can go on to some more obscure stuff that's more fun to research and shouldn't take as long. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd say that overall, just overall representation is what I'm most excited about and happy that we have.
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's really cool. And uh, yeah, it represents so much as well. And I can't wait. You know, when, when all the factions are in there and done, it's going to be amazing. Uh, I mean, it already is amazing, but uh, it's going to be, you know, pretty unbelievable, to be honest. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, I wasn't... I, sorry for everyone on the camera who was laughing. I, I was Who saw me laughing. I was laughing at the... Uh, there was like a Persian unit that has like a dragon, like a little dragon like puppet. It looks like a sock puppet as its, as its banner. Because <laughs> I've got the Indo-Greeks in here. And it was just <laughs> like, I was like in the action, like looking at some fighting and, it, and its little face just kept popping up in the corner of the, <laughs> the corner of the screen. Uh, so I was just laughing at that. But, but uh, anyway, um, should we move on to the final, the final part? The, uh, the uh, what's what's coming next? So, yeah. when obviously we know RAS version 0.6 is releasing on uh, the 27th of October. Touch wood, if all goes uh, if all goes well. Yeah. Um, so, what happens post release then? So, post release is going to be immediate feedback. Are we having any like crazy crashes or issues? that we thought we had maybe either fixed or something that maybe pops up. Everybody's rig and setup is different. Um, we have international players that play in their own language. So yeah. uh, we need to make yeah. sure, like obviously before we release that we have the language files <clears throat> updated to what they need to be. Um, but I will say this, and I've made allu I've alluded to it. We did not get everything that we planned for 060 into the release for the 27th. Yeah. And we had a choice. We could either delay it further or we could just cut it off. And we're at a really good cutoff point. Like we have, a, it's really great with what it is right now. It's just extra stuff that I really wanted to put in that we just ran. So um, we decided that we we're going to cut it off, release it, and then we're going to patch it. Um, so bef we have, uh, with where the team is right now and what the workload is looking like for the Romans, uh, we have a gap of time, a significant gap of time, I'd say, yeah. where we can patch 060 up with features and content that we just didn't have time to work on. Yeah. And we'll, we'll release that patch at a time. With those patches, you're, you're going to get like updates for bugs and glitches and issues. Um, so it'll be a nice little patches and substantial enough because they're going to be like centered around features. Yeah. And obviously, me and you have talked about this. Um, videos will come out on each patch and we'll talk about like what's that. Now, when it's done being patched, and I will, I'll give you a sneak preview. Um, there will be a culture with nine factions that um, is our last patch of 060. Mm. So nine new factions will be coming down with a culture. You guys can guess what culture that is and what factions it would comprise of. Um, well, I so, don't even know. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it'll be a culture, it'll be like a culture pack with nine factions and it's going to be $20. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> uh, it'll be free, obviously. Are you going to cut off part of the map and like add it in with yeah, that exactly. patch as well? Uh, yeah, exactly. So we're only going to uh, include that part of the map. Yeah, no, that'd be horrible. I could never do that to people, but um, yeah. So that'll that when that culture um, is remastered and its nine factions are done and put out with all their units, you know, you're you'll probably have like your unit video, and we'll yeah. have like a Mos like a Mosolos or a Jottle. We'll do like the history of the factions video, and then um, that will be like the cutoff of 060 work. So we might be like 060 06. 06 0.3, 06.5, 06 06.6, whatever. At that moment when that faction pack comes out, uh, we're done. Yeah. When we're done, we are then going head first, full steam ahead, Romans and Italics. Not just Rome, but all the Italics. Yeah. So you're going to get the Italic culture group and the Romans, and it's going to be a, a, its own faction pack. So a good group of factions. It's going to be totally focusing on the Italic Peninsula, south of where the Boy I are. So it, nothing for the Sea Salpine Gauls, nothing for the Ligurians, yeah. nothing for the Venetians. Those are all Celtic in nature. So it's going to be totally focused on the Italic. Now, um, also it's going to be focusing on not just the Italics and the Republican Roman, but it's also going to be focusing on the Imperial Roman. So yes, legions. 
Um, yeah. And there are a few things that I'm very, very, very excited to see if it works. Um, one would be the Senate feature. Yeah. How can you use the Senate feature in RES? Is the Senate feature even at a point where we can transfer it to vanilla and mod it to work with RIS? Can it work well? Um, that means like the Senate giving out the missions to take settlements. Um, also the party system. There's yeah. multiple ways we can do the party system. And I think that maybe, just maybe, we'll see. We have to do a lot of testing. I can confirm nor deny if it'll work. Um, you might be able to play Rome in two different ways. Yeah. And I'm just going to leave it there because <laughs> there's no sense in getting into details and no. just creating hype only for it to be disappointment. So I'm thinking that there's two ways that you can play Rome. I'm thinking that there's two ways that you can play against Rome. Yeah. So keep that in mind if you want to be an Epirus or a Carthage or a Syracuse player who takes on Rome. There might be two different ways that you can fight them or yeah. two different two different styles of Rome that you could fight. So again, I'll let people speculate on that. Um, and then obviously I'm, I'm a huge Italic fan. Um, so, you know, if you're thinking Samnites, if you're thinking Etruscans, and if you're thinking some other tribes that are in the Italic Peninsula, you're thinking absolutely right. If you're thinking the Mamertines, you're thinking right. Yeah. So all of the Italic-oriented people, and think about the AOR, think about the Italic mercenaries that were operating in Syracuse. Yeah, so 070 is going to be jam-packed with Romans and Italics. Nothing else. We're not going to be focusing on Celts. We're not yeah. going to be focusing on Carthaginians. We're not going to be focusing on anything with what we've focused on in 060. 060 will be tied up in a nice bow. It'll be put away. We'll allow you guys to enjoy that for a very long time. And in that time, we will be so dedicated to the Romans that everybody that's asking about Rome can know the answer. We're working on it. And <clears throat> the big news would be this. There will not be a release date. There will not be any release date for any of the patches. There will not be a release date for the next major release. And yeah. the reasoning is... It, um, because we work for free, because we don't really have set schedules, um, we don't know when things are going to get done. We no, don't yeah. know how long things are going to take. Um, I will have to say that, like, um, when I, I did not know that late July to late October would be the most mentally trying time of my year. Yeah. And I think a big part of that was putting release a release date. date on my shoulders. And that was a terrible decision. Terrible decision. Um, and we get asked every day, when's release, when's release? When's... And me and my team are simply just gonna ask, answer when it's done. Yeah. When it's done, when we feel ready. And I know that sucks for the players and the fans, but I hope you guys can also understand that we're also players and fans doing this spare time. We're volunteers here. Yeah. And um, it was a decision of, do we make release dates and kill ourselves? Or do we not make release dates and keep ourselves alive? And I think at the end of the day, the majority of people, if not overwhelming majority, would prefer that we just stick around and make stuff um, compared to burn out and disappear. So that's that's what you have. You have a set of patches coming out for release to make sure that we get everything that we want to get it in. You have a last patch that's going to be a culture group and faction group with nine factions that's going to cement this uh phase of development and then we're going straight into romans and italics yeah. um and when the romans and italics are done i'll just be tell you right now because it's just it's been in the plans for a long time the phoenician culture carthage would be next yeah um i cannot guarantee that we would work on the libyans midians or iberians with them it would be natural for us to assume so but that's too far down the road for me to really see it clearly as we get as we finish the romans and italics i'll have a clearer idea on what a Carthage Phoenician culture yeah. release looks like. Um, and then after that, it's a toss up. It's a it's a discussion that we have not yet had as a team, but we've kind of bounced around who it could be. Um, the, it really just depends on how the Carthaginian update would go. But um, so that's looking at 0.8. You then are looking at, okay, you have the rest of the East cultures, right? And then you have the rest of the barbarian cultures. Yeah. Um, would not be wise to condense all of those into one release. Mm -hmm. So 1.0 release is still going to be seeing certain cultures without a remastered look. Yeah. So I would say that's what a 1.0... I, I would say maybe a 1.5. Like, 
would be a final. Yeah. Like, if you you have to look at all the cultures, you have to look at all the units and the, and the factions per culture. You gotta look at like scope, assets, um, time availability, and um, there's a lot that goes into it. Because think about it, you have um, there's Celts, and there's not just mainland Celts. There's Britannic Celts. They're different. There's Germanics. Yeah. Now the good yeah. thing is. And like there's Celt Iberians and there's Iberian. Mm. So there's things there that's like they can the good news is as you make one, it provides materials for another. You have Illyrians. Illyrians are very different. Yeah. You have Dacians and Gete the Gete and Dacians. Who are so different from the Thracians, that's why we didn't do them. Yeah, yeah. And then you have the Scythians and the Sarmatians, who are similar enough, but then you have like the Saka, and then you have like you know, like we have the Wei Z and Zhang Nu and all of them planned. Yeah. So that's that's like East Asian Hunnic type type stuff that like hardly any of us know anything about. Yeah. And then you think Ethiopian, you think Arab, but not uh, just yeah. Arab. I can't wait for Kush. <laughs> yeah. There's Ethiopian and then there's like Arab. There's Judean, like the Hasmonean dynasty. Yeah. There's Assyrian and Mesopotamian factions that's that sprung up at the end of the Seleucid Empire, yeah. Caucasian and Armenian. And then think about it, we didn't finish, we didn't do the Eastern looking troops for Pontus and Cappadocia. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't do the Scythian units for Bosporans. So those yep. factions are still going to be in the works. And then Persia, there's going to be a Persian faction at the end of the day. Mm. And the Parni, like Parthia, hello, yep. it's like one of the most popular factions. And then there's a couple of obscure Eastern factions that are in the mix. And then India. Yeah. Like, there's an Indian faction now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's a lot, man. There's a lot to go. And um, I hope um, CA is listening because that's how you uh, how you do faction diversity, CA. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's a lot. And a 1.0 release is not going to be a finished state. It would just be like another number. I. I think a 1.15 seems a little bit, or even like a 2.0. Yeah. Um, and uh, the good news is mechanics and code are quicker and easier to get in. And then that's like kind of cemented for a long time. So it could be that we have more hands on deck with unit creation because our gameplay is pretty much done. Yeah, yeah. And we just need to remaster stuff and make new units and new factions. So it could be that. So who knows? Yeah, well, uh, false speculation after yeah. the perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds good, man. It sounds good, and I cannot wait for it to get finished. Hopefully, by that time, I'll have an SSD. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, by that time, people. Uh, hopefully, by that time, RIS is still capable of being ran on PC. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, but I mean, it sounds sounds amazing anyway, and I think we're all, uh, you know. Uh, you know, we're all thankful for the job that's been done so far, and you know, I just can't wait uh, for 0 0.6 and playing in Greece. But I was just going to say, guys, just so you guys know, uh, because of those extra patches uh, that are coming in, that's why I'm not going to do a story campaign to start with. I'm going to do a bit of a blitz campaign, I think, as Epirus, and uh, try and blitz Greece as quick as possible. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, and then when uh, 0.6 is fully released and fully done, I will uh, I will do a full story campaign and another campaign as well. And in the meantime, we'll have that first campaign, and then we'll have plenty of other little videos in in there. We've already thought of uh, you know the Syracuse playing tall one already today, so uh, there'll be plenty of little other videos in there with RAS, and of course all the patch notes videos that'll be similar to RAS weekends. So, uh, yeah, plenty more to look forward to um, in the future. So, I think I think we're done. Anything else? Okay. No, man. I'm. I think we we're tapped out, man. I think we got. I think <laughs> we, between the beginning of RES weekends and this interview, I think we've covered everything possible to cover for this release in copious detail as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if people are still feeling like they lack RES. After all of these, um, just get on your computer and start playing it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, 
I, I love RAS so much, I even got a, a battery and a hat. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> the Ikeans. Yeah, the Ikeans. Um, and also, there's a, there's a, there's a, um, what do you call it? An ancillary. I'm a bit delirious now. We, we've been going for quite a, long, quite a while, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, however long this video is, you know, we've been recording for over an hour, uh, three hours, so... Uh, <laughs> That's uh, totally fine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've been ahead all day, man. I, this is my day to just chill out. So yeah. Um, so brilliant. Well, thank you very much, guys. If you have enjoyed that, I mean, it's been very insightful from start to finish. Um, please do like and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to the mod down below on the twenty seventh of October when it releases. It'll automatically download the new version unless you change it to manual download so make sure that you have your campaigns finished by then and get ready to gnaws into some greece uh into some greece into some greek factions should i say get ready for that because it's going to be so uh fun and make sure you join the discord down below to ras um uh, and uh, yeah you can uh, interact with me mosca um a howl all the guys on there as well uh, although don't constantly tag a howl please <laughs> after i've said that <laughs> but you can you know, honestly, it's good karma because i tag everybody 24 7 so yeah um, um, Mos moscow would say i deserve it so uh you've you've had uh permission directly from the man himself <laughs> um <laughs> that was that was a wrong thing to say mate <laughs> <laughs> this is like after this video i i hope i just see in like ras general just a stream of uh, <laughs> just nothing to say oh, even man. just tagging you <laughs> oh man uh don't don't do that guys please don't do that don't do that but anyway it does happen <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for joining me, a Howl. What a pleasure it's been again. And uh, this time I wasn't concussed during the interview, so that's, that's uh, you know, been good <laughs> and helpful. Yeah, th thank you for having me, man. And just like last time, I completely forgot you were concussed last time. But yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it's been a good time. I've been happy to share um, the information that I know and happy to be part of this and bring this to you guys and i'm really excited um for the 27th and then i'm excited to start patching it that's i guess i'm more excited about <laughs> what's next um yeah. i'm i've been ready for release for a while so uh yeah uh, i'm excited to get on and uh start working on those patches for you guys awesome well guys thank you very much like and subscribe and we will see you all again on the next video me and mr cherry that is